Sound good? All right, so let's do uh, five, four, three, two. What's up, everybody? Eric here from Tea and Tobacco. Today, I have a special guest with me, and we are simulcasting. So I got James Patton with me. Hey, What's how's up, it man? going, man? I am so thrilled. If you guys don't know Eric, he showed me how to do all the live stuff on here. So uh, I'm just thrilled just to you know just to try it for the first time and really get you know kind of get better at this. I'm also hoping that I'm actually streaming because uh, I don't see anything happening on my end. So. Uh, I might have to upload this later, so we'll see. We shall see. <laughs> right now I'm seeing a big delay. It's like um, like a one-minute delay. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, all right. All right. So hopefully we're good. Uh, so, yeah, I got uh, James with me today, and uh, hopefully this works out. We are simulcasting on both of our channels, so um, you can catch... In either chat room, we will we will catch your messages. Uh, hopefully, there are people in yours and mine, and hopefully they can give us a shout out if you can see us, because I am curious. Because, like I said, right now my my control room says we are not live, while James apparently is live. So. I think I am, and it shows whatever for whatever reason it's like squished. The resolution's not right. It's that weird resolution I was telling you. <laughs> awesome. Well, at least I am recording this locally here as well. I have to, um, you know, throw the the uh, recording later. Not a big deal. We can live with that. So, uh, I started making videos in 2016. You were one of the people that. I was originally watching before I decided to channel and you were kind of like one of the inspirations of the channel. So <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, man. Um, all, all of my windows are weird looking. I hope it's not weird on my main. Um, let me see here. Uh, looks good from, okay. So Don says it looks good. Yeah. A lot of people were telling me that they're like, Hey, like, you know, you are the, one of the first people I saw that was doing, cigars or or maybe pipes and and it's kind of weird because i don't think of myself i'm i'm just you know i'm just kind of like a nerd so i don't really think of myself as you know like influential or anything i was just doing it just as a hobby really so it's kind of cool seeing that years later people are still like like i've had two or three people say that very similar things and i'm it's kind of cool to me yeah i like i mean since at the time uh, you're one of the smaller guys, but you there's kind of, um, kind of a little bit of a pack mm -hmm. at kind of the subscriber counts at that time where basically all the pipe guys were, you know, all the, the higher end of the pipe guys were all sitting in this kind of, uh, you know, little spot. Mm -hmm. So, Whoa. I mean, that's kind of... Hold on, your you know, your how it showed up. Your window's weird. I I don't think people are gonna be able to see you. Yeah, I think uh, you just went a little wonky on me. I think it's probably because of a a a, a lag issue or a um, yeah, probably a lag issue, possibly on your end. I'm not sure whose end it is, but <laughs> uh, this is really weird. Okay, hold on. Let me try. It's just like really zoomed in, and it looks really bad. I don't think we're. I know. Actually, you switched on me too. So. Yeah, I don't. One of us is not having a good time getting information out to the other. So okay, do you want me to <laughs> stop real quick and change this out? If you want, sure. Okay, <laughs> okay. Is there a way to like? I don't know what to do. Okay, everyone, hold on here. We're gonna try again. <laughs> it looks so bad. It's just like it's squished in. So yeah, if you go to edit, you can just you can just re pull it. That's what I had to do to you. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop real quick here because I was trying to re-pull it, but then it's not working right. It's like, uh, man, we've had a lot of issues with it. I tried. That's why we're always late, too. How do you, I know, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get so, yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out here. Okay. And um, All right. I see a couple people have come in on my stream, so hopefully 
nobody's talking yet, but we'll see how's that going. Yeah, I'm just trying. To- um, yeah, you just actually popped back out to the original size you were. <laughs> so I don't know if I probably just uh, did as well. Uh, I don't know. It's really weird. Okay. <laughs> People are like saying that you're cut off. Yeah. Uh, this guy, this guy, okay, maybe we should just stay on. Uh, right, are you yeah. watching this through the live control room or do you watch it through OBS? I'm watching it through OBS. Okay. Cause it just looks so different than what OBS is showing than what. Okay. Anyway, I think we're working. So yeah, it, yeah, just stay on top of OBS and you should be okay. If things change, you can just, you can just stretch it and move stuff around. <laughs> yeah, and then you show the comments um, on top of OBS in the corner. Is that what you do? Uh, yeah. I have multiple screens, so I don't have to do that. But, uh, yeah, you just keep it keep it uh, available for yourself so you can read them. Cool. Okay. I think we'll just keep this then. I, I won't, every time I switch around, every, all, all the resolution says it's 16 by 80. So that's why it's. I don't think it's putting out the right, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It's freaking out a little bit. Uh, but a friend in my uh, my room says uh, his view looks good at the moment, so I'm gonna go with that. So <laughs> we're all right. Yeah. So um, I wanted to talk about tea. Yeah. Um, I figured you were the guy to like talk to about tea. So that's why I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing like mattresses and like sleeping stuff. And so I wanted to talk about like, is there tea? Like, what's the best tea? What's uh, what's tea that might be good for, like, for sleeping, if that's a thing? Um, I wanted to talk about just anything you wanted to, really. Sure. Well, yeah, I, I've seen a few of your live streams, and people have asked, you know, what teas go with what. And um, I'm usually in there, and I chime in. Cause <laughs> and, and then you... Uh, you were at World Market one day, and you were sending me Instagram messages and uh, sending me pictures of what they had at World Market, asking me what you should buy. So. That's what I bought right there. You you recommended to me Black Dragon, which is yes, which is a which is a Taekwon Yin oolong. Um, so I figured that was probably going to be the highest quality you'll be able to find, at least in World Market. Yeah. So I was thinking to myself, most of the Western world, we don't know hardly anything about tea. And, um, you know, so this is like, okay, for reference, have you ever heard of Harney and Sons? Yes, I have heard of that. Okay, so this is probably like the highest quality I could probably get that is not, that, that's just regularly available. Is that, I mean, do you think they're pretty decent or? I don't know. I haven't had them, but I'm guessing they probably make a lot of flavored teas. Yeah, flavored black tea. So that's just black tea that's been coated in some flavoring or? Uh, most of the time, yes. So the, those tend to be, um, yeah, they're artificially flavored. Yeah. So. So that's probably not like. Is that considered not good or good or how I many? What like? What are your opinions on that? Like, is it like a flavored cigar thing where it's not maybe? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, it's really a personal taste. Obviously, yeah. if you want to drink flavored tea, drink flavored tea. Uh, I usually don't because there's so much good real tea out there mm-hmm. that there's not a whole lot of need to to venture out into <laughs> the flavored stuff when there's a vast major a va- a, I guess a yeah. massive uh, variety of tea out there. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I got um, my my AeroPress to make some tea today. Have you ever tried Have you ever tried an AeroPress? I don't. Have you ever seen these? I've seen them, but they're probably not something you want to do with tea for the most part because you don't want to press the tea leaves. Oh, or else you uh, you'll release a ton of bitterness, like the tannins. So that's kind of, the tannins. Yeah, you'll release the tannins. So like doing it in a French press or something. If you want to use a French press, that's fine. Just don't push the plunger. Okay. You can use the strainer. That's cool. Just don't push the plunger. Um, um, I've got another. Oh, I've got this thing. What do you think about these things? They hang in the bottom of your cup. If they are big enough, so yeah, if they're big enough and can take the expansion, mm-hmm. you should be fine. But I just saw you had a mason jar right there. I would say throw the throw the Taekwon Yin in the bottom of the mason jar and just fill it up, 
and then once all the uh, <laughs> once all the leaves sink to the bottom, you are good to go and just uh, drink off. Really? The top. You probably won't even need, you won't even need a filter. Yeah, they'll all just sink to oh, the bottom. What? Okay, you just blew my mind. I've never even thought about the. So that so that's called grandpa style. Oh, okay, yeah, grandpa style <laughs> is when you you basically put all the the leaf in the in a in a. They usually use like a tall glass, mm. so it's something you'll see done a lot with mm. some green teas like Dragonwell. That they'll they'll brew it in a tall glass and they'll just top off the water as they go. So you know they'll drink a little bit once they get down to like half down the glass. They'll top off the water. So that's actually called grandpa style. And actually, a lot of green teas are drank that way in China. What? You're kind of, you're kind yeah. of blowing my mind right now. That's one of the great things about the you know a high quality whole leaf tea. Right. You don't have those tiny little bits floating around. Yeah. So, like the Taekwon Yin you have, it should be relatively whole leaf. So yeah. it shouldn't be floating around and whatnot in the little bits. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, yeah. If you look at quality, if you look at the Harnian Suns, it's very tiny, broken up. Yeah. So that's probably not. It's yeah. It's probably not whole leaf, and it's probably mostly broken. It looks leaf. like whole leaf, so, but it's uh, really com- when you compare it to this. Maybe I was just wrong my whole, you know. So what's there between, uh, so black tea, white tea, and then oolongs, it's all from the tea family you were telling me. Yeah, that's much thicker. Yeah, so they all come, uh, yeah, it looks all right. It looks pretty. It's probably a little bit lower. I saw some stems roll through there, but uh, oh. so it's probably it's probably a mid-grade. Yeah. It's probably not super high grade, but uh, those are pretty much all rolled up into little balls, so when they dry them. They kind of have this technique of rolling it around in the huge walk, and then it rolls into those little kind of those little balls huh. of shapes. Really? So that's called a ro- that's called a rolled oolong. No way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are a few. Yeah. Really. It, so um, what? It says wrapping the leaves in a cloth and binding it tightly into a ball shape, and then when it's roasted, I guess that helps clump it up, huh? Yep. Uh, so yeah, the so basically for, for tea, they all come from the it all comes from the same plant, the Camellia sinensis. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a variety that um, is Assamica, so you'll see Assam as some teas. So it's almost a new species. They sometimes classify it as uh, you know a new species, but they're pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of a variety that's pushing the edge of speciation, um, but it all comes basically from the same plant. Um, it's just grown in different places. It's all processed differently, and then you within you have all types of cultivars that you know have been growing in isolation, you know, for a few hundred years. So they haven't been cross pollinating from different provinces and different counties. Um, so as far as the, the the main categories of tea, you have white tea, green tea, oolong tea, black tea, and then puer. So white tea is basically the leaves are picked and then they're allowed to naturally dry, usually like in the mm-hmm. sun. Um, sometimes they'll bring them into a warm climate controlled area to do the drying if the conditions aren't great. Um, Green tea is picked and then allowed to wither, and then they'll do a, a process called green kill, which is they heat it quickly so it sets the chloroform so it doesn't lose that green color. Um, and then oolongs, uh, well, let's skip it to black teas. Black teas, which are actually called red teas in China, if you actually directly what? translated it. So black, we call the Western world calls it a black tea, but in China they call it red tea. Um, basically, that is allowed. It's picked, and then usually the leaves are bruised to allow for full oxidation, so all the enzymes, you know, are allowed to oxidize. Which is why a lot of even whole leaf black tea will have some damage around the edges of the leaf because they need to be bruised to. Um, damage those cells to release the uh, enzymes and whatnot that allow for oxidation to happen. And then again, those will be, um, once the oxidation process is done, then they'll be uh, usually pan fried or whatever to get the desired shape and finish off drying the leaf completely. 
And then you have Oolong, which is probably one of the larger categories of the fresh teas. And that's basically Oolong is anything from between partially, very lightly oxidated to heavily, but not fully oxidated. So it's basically the full range. Like if it's basically, it's not green tea, but it's not black tea. So it's everything between as far as oxidation level goes. Um, so there is a huge range within the oolong. So you have the really light oolongs and then you'll have the much darker roasted or more oxidized oolong. So like what I'm drinking right now, I'm drinking some Da Hong Pao, which is a more oxidized oolong. You know, it's, it's a lot Whoa, darker. Those are, those are big, than, dude. So these are, so this is a twisted oolong. So the leaf is whole, uh, but it's not rolled into a ball like the Taekwon Yin is. Um, so the Taekwon Yin, you'll actually find it in different roasting levels. So you'll find the light roast, you'll find a medium roast, a dark roast, and yours is probably a medium, possibly a dark roast. I can't tell how green it is on right, the camera. Right. Uh, they just kind of call it Black Dragon. Uh... Yeah, so I'm guessing it's probably either a medium or a dark roast. Um, is it? Do you find it very floral at all? Do you find any floral notes in it? Um, a tiny bit, but it's it's actually kind of earthy and it's kind of yeah. yeah. It's so that's probably yeah. You're pushing probably that's a dark. Uh, it's either a medium or a dark roast. I'm guessing it's closer to a dark roast. Yeah. So yeah, just within Taekwon Yin and those rolled oolongs. Just depending on the roasting level, you'll get a completely different flavor profile because usually like a really green Taekwon Yin is going to be really floral. Oh. It's going to it's going to it's like you threw like jasmine flowers into your into your teacup. <laughs> uh, and then you have the the darker roasts, which I like a lot more. They have a bit of a deeper, earthier flavor, like you said. Um, huh. This Da Hong Pao is what's called a Wu Yi. It's gro grown in the Wu Yi mountain region. And um it's also called a rock oolong, and um, they tend to be the twisted oolongs, and they're usually a lot more oxidized, um, so it gives you that earthier flavor. Wu Yi? Wu Yi. It's uh, W-U-Y-I. So, um, so those are kind of the, your main fresh categories, mm -hmm. and then you have pur, which is a type of tea that's a lot of different cultivars, but generally it's um, it's picked and then stored for a long time. So there's actually two types. There's type of, there's raw and there's ripe. And um, so basically with raw pu'er, what they're going to do, they're basically going to go process it like a white tea. They're just going to let it naturally dry out, and then they're going to store it either loose or they're going to press it into cakes. Um, and that can either be done after a long time. They can, you know, let it store it loose, let it age loose for, you know, six, seven years before they press it into a cake, or they can press it into a cake right away and then then age it as a cake. Hmm. Um, and uh, over, so basically, fresh yeah. um, and very young raw pu'er will have kind of a. This is very generalized, but it's going to have a bit more of a green tea-like flavor. Uh, it'll be a bit more vegetal. Um, and then while it, it once it ages, kind of the bitterness starts to drop off, and it kind of smooths out uh, over time. But we're talking over the course of 20 years. So, you know, 20 years is considered a not... It's not super aged, but it's old enough. <laughs> so, I mean, some people... If you can get a hold of aged raw pu'er, it is very expensive. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of tough to be able to sample some of that older uh, raw pu'er these days. I mean, getting a cake from like 2006, depending on the quality, you could be pushing a few thousand dollars for, you know, 300 and 356, 357 gram is a kind of the standard size cake. I don't know why it's three fifty seven, but that's what it is. So, do people trade that like some sort of? Yes, actually, there's a huge secondary market for 
for uh, poor, you know, being stored mm-hmm. and all that fun stuff. And a lot of people collect it and hope it, you know, gains value and they can resell it later. Um, it really depends. There are a lot. So there are kind of like the big uh, poor tea factories um, that produce kind of the same recipes year after year, and they'll also release special editions. So that's only going to be you know released one year, maybe over two years. Uh, then you have some more boutique. There's a lot of boutique producers these days. Um, so you have like Unan Sourcing. They're a huge supplier where you can get tea. From China, directly from China. They do have a U.S. site that they do carry some inventory on, but they don't carry all of it. Uh, they've started. They started pressing their own cakes back in the uh, early 2010s, somewhere around there. I think it was 2000, 2011 or 12. I think they started pressing their old oh. cakes. Yeah, it might have even been 2009 when they started. But anyways, they started pressing their own cakes. So they're distrib- They started out as you know a. Uh, supplier a western facing supplier for chinese teas and then they started producing their own lines um you have uh crimson lotus which is based out of seattle i believe but they are pressing cakes right now um for this year i've seen plenty of stuff on their facebook page they're pressing their their 2019s right now um let's see yeah you got white 2t i don't know where they're based out of but they are are uh, again they go over select all the teas and press their own tea cakes. So uh, so they produce kind of their own stuff as well. So there's a lot of producers. So there's some very large producers mm-hmm. like the uh, 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 Menghai Tea Factory and the Sheguin Tea Factory. Those have been around for a very long time and been making cakes for a very long time. Um, and depending on the recipe can be very expensive and especially depending on the year can be super expensive. Just on the year? Um, just on the year, what year they make it, yeah. So like wine I mean, or something but yeah. like that? Yeah, exactly. So some years, and they might only produce it for a certain year just because they had access to some, you know, we, estate where they only produce, we, you know, so much leaf. We were in Napa. We were in Napa Valley. This was last year. And everyone goes, um, this is like, like across the board, everyone goes, oh, well, if you had the 15, that's good. But the 16, the 2016, it was a really wet, went a wet year, and therefore right. the grapes were better that year. And so everyone was coveting like this, a certain line or two, a, a few different lines, but they were all coveting the 16, which was like twice as valuable as the yeah, as a lot of the other ones. Yeah, and you have that same thing with tea. Obviously, it's going to be affected by the weather. Um, so you'll have some variance from year to year. Um, I think. I think with wine and tea versus tobacco is that they are perennial plants. Right. So they stay in one spot and they they just grow year after year, whereas tobacco is planted fresh every single year. So I think they can at least accommodate some of, not so much the weather, but at least the soil conditions and stuff like that and, and adjust for, for fertilizer and various things. So that's that's why I think tobacco might be a little more consistent. It'd be consistent year to year. Mm-hmm. Um, but tea, same thing. It's really the plant's there, and it, you can't move it. And it's not, you know, if it, it's been growing there for six hundred years, so you know you can only uh, do so much. Did you have any questions on uh, or comments on your channel? Uh, I have not. I just have a couple people watching. This guy, his name is Don. He's a he's a good. Well, he's he's been a fan for a while. He says, "What's your favorite tea to pair with a cigar?" And all right, so that's what I'm actually drinking right now. Okay. So I'm drinking Da Hong Pao, which is called Big Red Robe. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a rock oolong, like I said. So it's mostly oxidized. Really, the reason I choose it is it's right in the middle with a it has a nice sweetness level and it has a nice bitterness level so it's a super balanced uh tea um that's so the one, really that's the one go, that's a clone if you it's a clone but the real one is right. considered maybe the most valuable or the best in the world you were saying yeah the most valuable because there are only about three of the original trees left and there are you know hundreds I, I, they might even be thousands of years old um, so there's only three of the original trees left and you can't get them. You can't get the real Da Hong Pao outside of China. And it's only going to be high level people in the government who are going to be able to get it because 
Uh, I think the last time any was on sale was in the mid 90s on the open market. Is something like one kilogram went for just shy of a million dollars. <laughs> so, and that was the last time it's been available on the open market. Ever since then, it's pretty much just uh, reserved for high-level officials and mm-hmm. other foreign dignitaries and stuff like that. So, basically, what happened is they started taking cuttings off of the original mm-hmm. trees and started, you know, grafting them onto rootstock, just like you would an apple tree or whatever. So. Then they started planting kind of, you know, plantations of the cloned trees. And they they so, call that, um, is it just like propagating or what, what do you call that? Yeah, so that's just how they propagated clones of, of those trees. So now there are um, some plantations that have the clones of the trees and that's what you get on the open market. So it's, uh, it's cloned off the trees, so it's pretty mm. close. Uh, but you just don't have the multi, year, multi yeah, the hundreds of year old rootstock right. and all that stuff, you know, attached to it. So I think it was somewhere in the might have been the sixties or seventies when they did the clones. So the trees now are at least the oldest trees are probably around the forty years old or so. Look at look at the weird stream. Uh, I think this is. I think I messed up. Can you see that? <laughs> That's what people are saying. That. It looks like we're squished. <laughs> It looks good on my end, so okay. Well, shoot. I can send you the file later if uh, if we need to. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um. Uh, so to f- to finish off the last um, the last type of tea. So we we're talking about raw pour. Okay. Uh, the last is called ripe pour. Um, so this was developed in the late '60s, early '70s. They wanted to figure out a way to age the tea faster, because obviously when when raw pour is considered peak at you know 40 years old it takes a long time <laughs> to store some tea to be able to drink it so basically the monghai tea factory started developing the process that is now called ripe and it's essentially fermented in a pile so it's they you know uh, pile it up into big piles on like a concrete floor or whatever um, and then they wet it down and let it ferment. They have to turn the pile and everything. So very similar to how tobacco is is processed, uh, you know, in, in piles and fermented in piles and turned and all that fun stuff. So roughly 45 days or so, they do this process. It doesn't exactly mimic the aging process, so, but it did produce a product that is pretty unique on its own. So it kind of worked its way in. So, uh, ripe pour is pretty much a product unto itself. Um, and can, you know, it's not considered, um, a, I don't know what you want to call it. A a bastardization of the raw pour, I guess. I was calling it poo air my whole life. Now I feel like an idiot. (laughs) Is it, it, I've heard it pronounced both ways, pu'er pu'er. Huh. Close enough. Um, but yeah, so the the ripe. I tend to drink a lot more ripe one because I can't afford raws and that are old enough. And um, I tend to like the the ripe pu'er. Uh, again, it will change with age, so you can store it, you know, pretty much indefinitely. Um, but I tend to drink a lot more ripe than raw uh, pu'er, and it has a really Generally, it kind of has a really, really earthy flavor. Um, I've had some that have decent amount of sweetness in there, too. I I have one that I'm totally spacing the... uh, I think it's called White Lotus. It was produced by the Monghai Tea Factory just in 2013-14, and I think they might have released one in 17. Um, But it kind of actually has a maple syrup-type flavor to it. Um, hmm. so it's really nice, but the, those cakes are starting to go up in price. Um, they're, they're probably about in the $80 range now for a, for a three, uh, three fifty seven. <laughs> but I mean, that's not bad. I mean, you know, per, per tea session, if you are using five grams per tea session, I mean, that works out to, you know, maybe what a buck 25 per session. Right. So what's your regular Starbucks cost, right. you know, 
four dollars. And, and you so. you are re-steeping five six times. Even more, some some pours you can push it out well into the teens. Um, so it really depends on the tea. Um, you know, white teas I might get out to eight steepings. Black teas pushing out to ten to twelve, uh, depending on the oolong can range. I feel like I've been wasting you know, from, tea my whole life, man. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, to, just to put it into expect. Uh, for volume of water, I mean, you're looking at five grams. You, know, you can easily make about a liter of tea out of it. So, you know, roughly, you know, 33 ounces or whatever. Hmm. Uh, Cody, someone said, oh, background cat. Yeah, that's my cat, Luna, if you guys didn't know. <laughs> um, interesting fact about Luna, she likes hanging her head off of everything. So she looks like she's dead right now, but she just hangs her head. She'll be there all day, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she looks weird. Um, okay, uh, Cody says if you want to talk about deep science and theoretical physics, uh, theoretical physics, we can live stream sometime. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about theoretical physics, um, but sure, we could chat. Uh, I think that's all the questions. Oh, this one guy said that he. W- He's, he said he called you a, a, the Don called you a tea master. I wouldn't go we that far. We should use that hashtag, I dude. Tea <laughs> master. No, if you put that on your Instagram, the tea master, that would be really. I think that's a good way to kind of, I don't know, set you apart a little bit. Yeah, I think I might get dinged by all the other tea people who are way more knowledgeable than I am. No. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough crowd. <laughs> Is it kind of like cigars where you're not, you're never, um, it's never enough or you, there's, there's just levels and people think they're on a better level or. Uh, possibly. I mean, one thing that's really holding me back is I don't speak Chinese right. and I can't read Chinese. Right, right. <laughs> so, I mean, that's going to be a huge problem, especially when you're dealing with, a lot of these nuanced um, uh, uh, teas, because you know, just from various, I can't read the wrappers on the poor. You know, I can I can do my best and hopefully use Google Translate to get as much information off of it as I can, um, but I can only do so much. Um, since I don't go to China and I don't deal with the, that stuff, it's not going to be a huge deal for me. Um, and but one thing about uh, one thing about poor is you really have to be careful of fakes. So you do have to, you know, just like Cuban cigars, there's lots of fakes out there. Um, there are for the higher end um, poors as well. I mean, if if a cake's going to cost six thousand dollars, somebody's going to try to fake it. Um, and try to fake the labels and all that fun stuff to to make a buck off of a fifteen dollar cake, Jeez. you know. So scam. I thought I could rechange my rescale output. I guess I can't when I'm streaming. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So that's yeah, that's one thing to is a problem. You just you need to make sure you find quality dealers. Right. That where do you um, buy your where you know rep- Where do you recommend? So, uh, top of my list is Unon Sourcing. Uh, it's run by a guy named Scott. I believe his last name is Wilson. Um, he's uh, American, now living in China. He um, started it in the early 2000s. And because there weren't really any Western facing company in China selling to uh, the Western market, so he started. He started sourcing stuff, and and people wanted you know various teas, so he ended up making a business out of it. Um, and now he is probably one of the biggest Western-facing, if not the biggest Western-facing sites with a very high reputation. Uh, and like I said, they started producing their own uh, poor cakes um, about you know seven eight years ago. So. They have some very good stuff under their own brands and uh, uh, very um, huh. uh, affordable, especially when you're buying in current or just previous year. Um, as they start getting older, they start going up in price. I just switched but. you over to um, 
you probably can't see this, but the background I put the website and I'm I'm scrolling <laughs> through and I just can't believe there's so many uh I, I, I don't even know where to start. This is kind of crazy. Yeah, their selection is massive. For for just poor, they probably have at least 600 different poors um, from different factories, different producers. Um, it, it, yeah, this is just a huge variety. They also have a – they source a ton of fresh teas. They buy direct from the far, a lot of farmers. So and you're getting direct off the plantation. Uh, they work with a lot. So – um, a lot of their teas may not necessarily be labeled or cert- certified mm-hmm. organic, but they work with a lot of their supply, a lot of their farmers to grow um, with you know uh, environmentally friendly needs and all uh, uh, means and all that stuff. They also do chemical testing on their teas, and they test for like what the levels of you know 192 different you know, chemicals that they could find to make sure that they aren't, you know, you know, the, the tea producers are not lying about the fertilizers or pesticides that they're using. Wow. Yeah. This is blowing me. Okay. There is a cake on here. It's a 13 year aged bamboo coin, raw pu'er tea of De Hong. Is that what? Yeah. That's $24 for one cake. How big is it? Oh, what, how- um, What's the gram yeah, I mean, size? They're usually like they're usually like three fifty seven is pretty normal. You'll get one hundred and two hundred gram cakes too, and four hundred and five hundred gram cakes. Oh, okay. Uh, this it's just not too bad. It's a bundle of fifteen coins, which equals one hundred and fifty grams. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's not, oh it's not no that no expensive. no. I just I, I thought one of those coins, one of those cakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So each one is ten yeah. grams. I thought ten grams for twenty four dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there are probably the. I'm pretty sure there is tea on their site that is twenty four dollars for ten grams. Yeah, sample. how do I search for that? Where's the most expensive? That's this is kind of intriguing to me. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I would probably go if you go under the poor, you go to Meng Hai and you go to the oldest date the oldest that they date. have. It's kind of like whiskey. You're, yeah, it's probably going to be the most expensive. They're going they're going to get expensive. Dollars for a um, gift box. Yeah, I mean that's not even. Two hundred. I mean, I'm two hundred and sixty-five dollars for a nineteen ninety CNNP aged rye puer. Yeah, and that's not even that expensive, especially for a nineteen ninety, and it's a ripe. It's it's a ripe, so it's not going to be as coveted this as is a raw. The year I was born. Oh my gosh. So it, it, it does <laughs> it, it. It just keeps so, oxidizing, or does it? Is does it? I mean, does it mold or? So it's not really an oxidization. It's more like how um, you know pipe tobacco goes through the enzymes eventually. You know, it's it's enzyme activity more than oxidation. Yeah. I got some um, here. They just break down. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to show people. Actually, that's why I brought it because that's the only thing I can really compare it to. But I made my own pipe tobacco, and oh. over time, it's kind of it's not breaking down. Well, maybe it's breaking down. It's almost like fermenting more. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, with, with pipe tobacco, you have the the enzymes, you have the aerobic activity that uses up all the oxygen in the jar, and then you have the anaerobic activity that uh, runs without oxygen, right. and that's kind of the that's kind of the the type of aging you want to happen. Right. So you know, once you jar it, it's like you want to keep it closed for a long, long time because it takes about a year for the oxygen to be used up, and then. You know, after that, the anaerobic activity starts. But if you open the jar, you have, you reset that all up. Right. So you know, you gotta you gotta deal with that. So if you uh, if you're gonna age, if you're gonna purposely age stuff, you definitely want to keep your jars closed and not check on them, not play with them. And you're gonna be going, you know, minimum of two years if you want some decent aging. Or if it's a Virginia or something, I mean, you're talking like seven you're years right. sitting on. Yeah. Do you like the the? Do you prefer? Um like a super, I know some guys who go, oh, okay, I prefer, you know, two years after I buy it. I mean, it's already aged in the tin a little bit, but, well, it can be. Yeah. Depends on the producer, yeah. obviously. You know, when you're looking at things like Esoterica, yeah. they're they're going to be perfect right, right when you get them because they've already been aged optimally. Um, but still, uh, if you've ever had like a, 
a 10 year age Penzance or something, it's still right. good. The lots of key has dropped off. <laughs> um, it's not nearly as smoky, but since it's such high quality leaf, it's still really nice. Um, as far as aging goes, yeah, it depends. Uh, lot tequila based blends. Uh, I like to hold on to them for at least two years before I open them. Yeah. Um, that's just general. If it's if it's esoterica, I, I'm not, I won't wait. They'll, they'll be fine. Or um, Samuel Gowith, same thing. Uh, they're they're good. They're cr- right, right they off the bat. They have a lot of crystally uh, crystalline structures on them, and that's how I know. Yeah. Just from a visual standpoint, I don't know if a lot of people do this, but I go, oh, this has plume or crystals. I know it's ready to go. Yeah. Um, and but then some of the the other producers, uh, you know. Uh, tch, 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 well, McClellan's gone. C and D, you know, those I'll sit on for uh, two years before I open them. Um, but yeah, so so really, kind of the really high end producers are usually good. Um, but just because I have such a backlog, I end up sitting on them for two or three years, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I got a whole closet uh, over there. It's I don't really smoke a lot of pipes. I'm more of a cigar guy. Yeah, but... I mean that's oh. Uh, over here, you know that that's just a partial of it, but I got you know like 140 oh unopened tins gosh. right now. Yeah, do you have a favorite um, like an overall favorite pipe tobacco or? Um, I'd say Esoterica Penzance is probably my yeah. favorite. Um, it's good, uh, fresh, you know, in a fresh shipment, or it's good ten years old. So I actually have a bag that I bought in 2011 that. I'm going to open up soon. <laughs> yeah, and I see, so, so I see I have a that. few different... Uh, yeah, I see. Is that... I can't read it. Yeah, Maybe it I says have, Margate. Um, I can't tell. Yeah, I have Mar... Up up there, I have Margate and Soda Bed, uh, Stonehaven, Penzance. Um, but I also have um, a few things of Dorchester. I got a few things of Dunbar. Um, what else I got? I got a couple things of Scarborough and one of... Birmingham or something like that. Bring them. I haven't bring even them, heard of those, those last two. Scarborough's a uh, is a straight Virginia. Actually, so is um, Bring them ten or something like that. Uh, they're both uh, straight Virginias. Mm-hmm. One is basically all Scarborough's all yellow Virginias, mm-hmm. maybe with a little red in it, uh, and then uh, the other one has some, I think, some stove Virginia in it as well. Huh. Yeah. But I, I've managed to uh I've managed to luck into some esoterica. I wouldn't say I've been Well I can pretty all my esoterica has been lucky finds just walking yeah. into a walking into a brick and mortar and be like, Ooh, uh, all right, I'm gonna buy you out of uh, all your esotericas. You know? No, before it was um I remember seeing it was a bag of some it was some esoterica blend uh, blend. And it was a little cigar shop by my college, and they were like, they didn't know what to do with it because no one knew anything about it, no one cared. And looking back, I'm like, if I, well, if I had if I had the money, I would have just bought all of it because I can never find it now. Right. And I see the, the only esoteric blends I've, I've I've actually received are from fans or from friends, so it, it's just kind of like a pain in the butt. But yeah, you have to be on the lookout and you have to be scouting it to actually yeah. get it. Especially online because it's gone within ten minutes of it hitting hitting stores. Um, so brick and mortars tend to be the best bet, especially because I think they purpose purposely ship to brick and mortars mm-hmm. first before shipping to online retailers. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um. I, people always ask me what's my favorite, and I always tell them I think this is overall my favorite. Have you heard of this before? Yes, I have a tin of it. I haven't opened it yet. Um. I've bought. <laughs> Okay, so I've, I think this is my fifth tin, and I've noticed it tastes way better fresh out of the tin than my, my aged stuff that I've got. This has kind of been open for like a year or more. Uh, so I'm assuming that just means I like the topping, maybe? I don't know. But um, it's, it's really good. I think it's actually a replica of, a, of an older brand. Uh, Fusilier, I can never say it right. Um, Fusilier's ration, but... I forget if it's a. I think it's a remake of an old blend. I forget what. Right. I am not sure, but yeah, I think you are correct. I think that line was right. all right around the same time as the 
people trying to recreate uh, Bulk and Sobrani. Yeah, I think the White Knight is a recreation, I believe. So all of the all of the marquee yeah. series from Hearth and Home are recreations, and actually all of them are. I mean, I've actually never had the originals, but they're all pretty good. These are actually, you know, very good pipe tobaccos, I think. Um, but yeah, this people ask me what, like, what, what do you like about this? I'm like, I don't know. I, it just has a sort of like a star anise kind of hint of flavor and uh, just a kind of a balanced blend. But yeah, that's what I. This is a, this is my go-to right here. <clears throat> Yeah, my uh, I, I'd say my go-to just because Penzance is expensive right. <laughs> uh, would be uh, C and D's pirate cake. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've had. I'm a huge I'm a huge Latakia guy, so you know, seventy five percent Latakia. I'm I'm down I, with that. I should I should send you. I've got whole leaves of of Latakia that I don't know. I mean, maybe I could just make something with it, but I'm like, it's really it's actually surprisingly good, but just by itself. Like you, mm-hmm. I, you I bet it actually is. Actually, just smoke it by itself, and uh, you'd be like, "Wow, this! I mean, this this is ninety percent there." Like maybe, maybe I would add like a little bit of Virginia, like a red Virginia, maybe, or I don't know what to it, but I would add. Did you get it from Holy? Uh, did you get it from yes. Leaf Only? I would. I have on hand um, their semi Oriental. I don't know five. Four, five, six. I think that's what it's called. That is so good, and I bet it would go awesome with Latakia. Really? So I think that with a little, with a splash of Virginia would be great. <laughs> yeah, my um, my f- the first ever English tobacco I had was from I I didn't know anything about pipes, and it was uh, it, f- it was from Samuel Galwith. It was called uh, Commonwealth um, Blend or Mixture, and it's fifty percent Latakia, fifty percent. Virginia and I was like, man, this is pretty darn good. Like I, in my head, I thought I didn't need to explore anymore. Um, but have you have you ever tried Commonwealth or? I have not. Um, it's I guess it's pretty bold because coming from cigars, pipes are generally kind of mild. So if people are like watching and you're watching and you're like, hey, I'm into cigars, I would recommend yeah a, a heavier English for a lot of guys just because they're they're used to definitely yeah. I th- yeah. Going from cigars, I think, I think cigar smokers enjoy English tobaccos yeah. more than anything yeah, else. Yeah, for sure. People are like, "Well, what do you recommend?" I'm like, "Just it's cheap, so just buy like a bunch of English, a, you know, a, a few different aromatics." And I always say, just buy a corn cob pipe because they're ten dollars. Um, yeah. Um, as far as I, I see, uh, in your somebody's asking, what would be the best way to start smoking pipes? Um, if, if you go to my channel, I have a how to smoke pipe, how to smoke a pipe video. Um, but um, I stray from the advising your first pipe to be a corn cob. Oh, you do. Um, I yes, I know that's I know that's a uh, a uh, contentious yeah. point to some well, people. Well, it's um, it, I've okay. So I've had I have like five corn cobs, two of them. I love and the rest are just eh, like for they just they're mostly for show um but why yeah i want i'm curious why do you why do you recommend that so one smoking a pipe is a bit of a trick yeah <laughs> it's not exactly as straightforward as cigars so my advice is the advice I give is to give a new pipe smoker the best chance of succeeding. Mm-hmm. So I usually, what I recommend is get a semi-decent briar, um, you know, somewhere in the $80 range. You know, you're looking at Peterson's, Savinelli, you know, something like that. Something, something around $80 right. to $90. And then one thing about that, if you want to give up pipe smoking, you can turn around and resell right. that pipe for probably 75% of what you paid On for. On eBay, it. yeah. So, so you're not going to be out a ton of money if you hate it. And if you like it, you have a decent pipe to start right. with. Um, so, and then with cobs, I think they require... A, one thing I don't like about cobs is usually the draft hole is way too open. That's why I was gonna I was gonna talk about that. Yes, is it the same? Is it, is that the same critique you have about? That's them? what I tell people: get a corn cob, and then I have a. It's a company. It's they're called a Walker Briar Works, and they make 
stems specifically for the you know the corn cob pipe, the Missouri Meerschaum corn cob yeah. pipe. My cat wants attention, and um, and so that has completely solved everything that I don't like about um, corn uh, corn cob pipe. What do you want, cat? And um, yeah. so I, you know, it's like an extra fifteen twenty dollars, but for thirty dollars, then all of a sudden you have a nice cool smoke that's not too drafty or you know. Yeah. So, so I so that's why I, I tend to send people towards a, a half decent yeah. briar to start with. Um, Cause they're probably, yeah. they're, so, right, so that's, they're not going to want to go out and buy a custom stem. Right. So yeah, to buy the two pieces. Um, yeah. So, so you have that. I mean, I do have a ton of cobs just cause I don't smoke aromatics, uh, you know, regularly. Mm-hmm. And, but I do review them. Mm-hmm. So I have a ton of cobs just for right. those. Um, Actually, my pipe rack is a little empty. My they're all on my need to clean rack, but really, all my briars are just dedicated to the top row is Latakia blends, uh, and the the bottom row is basically all the other mm-hmm. uh, non aromatic. So Virginia vapors and Burleys um, all go in those. So yeah, do you want to explain? Um, a lot of my guys probably don't even know what a vapor is. Do you want um, or? Sure. So a, a, a vapor is just a shorthand for uh, Virginia Perique. Mm-hmm. Uh, so VA for Virginia and per for the Perique. Um, it's a very typical blend um, that is used. Yeah. Uh, that's just going to be you know a lot of Virginia with some Perique mixed in. Um, yeah, because I thought it so. was I thought it was vape vapor. And, um, <laughs> people were like. Oh yeah, yeah. I know what vaping. Like they thought it was like something to do with the e-liquid or something, or they, I don't know. I was like, no, it's two different. It's Virginia Perique vapor. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine's in uh, my chat saying uh, he's staring at a tiny tin of Penzance right now, which I gave to him, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, not for first, maybe for second when it coming to uh, corn cob pipes. Same thing. He says it's just way too open. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the only. Um, I, I I have about five or six Chris Morgan pipes, and uh, he, he has the Bones series. And what I do is I yep. just about once a year I'll kind of like customize it. Like I'll color one or I'll kind of rough it up a certain way. But they're like thirty to forty dollars, and they're pretty decent. Like I mean, they're real. I think it's Algerian Briar or whatever everyone uses. They're just not perfect pieces of wood. Yeah. yeah, they're not perfect. They have imperfections, and but they yeah. still have all the same smoking characteristics. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's a good way to go. They're a bit cheaper, I believe. I bet I think the bones pipes are somewhere in the forty to fifty dollar range. Yeah, and I I love the weird goofy shapes and sizes. And so yeah. if you guys are just starting out, yeah, check out Chris Morgan Pipes or dot com or something like that. Uh, yeah, if you if you Google bones pipes, you'll you'll find yeah. them. Um, but yeah, I, that'd be a good starter as well. This is yeah, actually, I, I can definitely get on board. This with is that. my favorite pipe I wanted to show you. I don't know if you've seen me smoke this. Probably. And it is, and it's called an Irwin's Second. And I looked it up. I think that has something to do with, I don't know. I think it was a second of a KBB or a KKK pipe. I forget what they call, what they're called. But yeah, there are some, there are some pipes where actually the, uh, People don't know that the line is actually seconds of a larger right, line. Right, so I think this is a second. So, so like Roma, like Roma are the seconds of Savin. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what it is, but this is a super lightweight um, sort of. I don't know what what would you call this shape? It's sort of billiard, but it's kind of the stem is ovular. Um, is it? I'd still call okay, it okay. Because some people I've no I've I've heard call this like a like a weird Liverpool. It's push. Oh, you froze. Where? What happened? Canadian, because of how long the stem is. Yeah, it's almost like oh, Canadian. It's pushing Canadian. It's like Canadian liver. What's what's a Liverpool? Is that similar? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's similar to a Liverpool. I don't know, but this is my favorite. I don't know why. It just has this sort of light, good mouthfeel. I don't have many light cigars. They're pretty much all. I mean, light cigars, <laughs> uh, light pipes. They're all pretty much massive. So I got like this bad boy. I was smoking while I was talking to you a couple days ago. Huge. Um, 
It is. It is ginormous. I actually got this is actually a hearth and home. Really? Um, I actually got this for free because my international pipe smoking order a couple of years ago, like never made it to me. And like apparently they never shipped huh. it because because they were going through a bunch. They were going through a system transition right as international pipe smoking. I don't know if you remember this or not. Uh, yeah. So so I find I contacted them and they're like, oh, crap. Okay, all right. They found my they found my order. They got my order. They're like, "Hey, what what kind of what shape pipes do you like?" I'm like, "Oh, I like, you know, <laughs> bent uh Dublins or straight Dublins or anything." They're like, "Okay." Um and then they also sent me a couple more tobaccos as well with the order. So they they more than made up for the problem with the shipping by sending me, you know, this brand spanking new huge I I said I like big chunky pipes. They're like, we can do that. Um, so they got they got me this big huge pipe for free with a couple of tobaccos. So they they more than corrected the problem at least for me. So I have not had any problems with pipes and cigars since then. I know some people don't like them, but they 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 took care of me when they. Have you up, seen so. those uh, Mister Brogs? Those are kind of big. Yeah, like especially like the Morta. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a huge. Um, more to in that <laughs> it looks like a tiny little hole inside this chunk of wood. <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. I gotta show you. A yeah, show me. That I got. So this, it's not a brog. Can you? Hear yeah, me? I can hear you just fine. Surprisingly. Okay. So I had I bought um, when I first started smoking a pipe. I found a. I found a small little pipe rack in an antique shop, a massive antique shop when I lived in Columbus, Ohio. There's some huge antique shop, so you have to look for a very long time to find stuff. Anyways, I found a little pipe stand. It was probably like a five holder pipe mm. stand. It's actually shaped like a uh, I even remember what it was shaped like. It was shaped like the wheel of like a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> and um, on it was uh, a Peterson Dublin a GBD Dublin and uh, Kamoys. Um, I got all, all three of those for 20 So that was awesome. So anyways, I didn't really like the Kamoys. It, it was kind of just a fat squat, like uh, I don't even know what you want to call it. Uh, anyways, it just had like a really long stem, but the bowl was super small. Anyway, so I traded it away and what I got in return was this thing. Oh my lord! Is that a freehand? So, what is that thing? So it it's basically just a freaking block of wood, <laughs> you know. Oh. So this is this is a, a an Ehrlich. Um, they were a uh, tobacco shop based out of Boston. Um, they closed somewhere in like the early '90s or late '80s. So this thing's probably at least 25, 30 years old. Um, but it is, I mean, look how massive honking this thing is and it just weighs a ton and I love it. <laughs> what, what do they call that? Like a jawbreaker or there's a, there's a name for heavy pipes. Oh yeah. I, I could see it being called a jawbreaker. <laughs> so yeah. So that's just one of my massive pipes. And have you heard of Tim West? No. Who's Tim West? Tim West. He's a, uh, he's a, he is like one of the premier American freehand style pipe makers. Um, I'm not sure if he's still act. He's probably pretty old right now. Um, he uh, lived just north of Columbus. Um, that was just a coincidence that I happened to live there at one point. Um, but anyways, he, he was kind of like the premier American freehand maker. So I always wanted one. Somebody on the forums posted that they had one for sale a couple Christmases ago. So I had to buy it. It was only 100 bucks, And this is the bad boy. And it is freaking massive. What so the heck? Th- this and the bowl is huge. This thing can probably take... Man, it takes forever to smoke this Dude. bad boy. But it is probably one of my favorite pipes. And it's got this nice twisted pattern. What you the know, right heck? In- yeah. He- if you search him on eBay or just search him in general. Okay, Tim I'm going to look this up for the he audience makes- here. Yeah, he makes some huge and amazing freehand pipes. So I had to get one of him. So he was really one of the only makers that I really had to get. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because I really loved his stuff. Let me show um, people. I'm going to switch right. Okay. Uh, so they can see you and me. And let me see if I, I got to move your picture here. Um, I got to unlock you. Then I can move you over on top of me. Okay. And let me go into what in the. Okay. Oh, it's just showing Peterson. Okay. Um, Tim West pipes. Tim West, yeah. Uh, uh, but he is um, similar to. He's not as crazy as the Boswell yeah. boys. <laughs> he could take three. Um, but he just made really nice. He also made you know some normal style stuff too. But he really kind of specialized in free hands. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was kind of like one of the huge American guys who started, you know, uh, he, he's one of the places, I think he's one of the first places you could start getting pipe making materials and stuff too, if I'm, wow. if I'm not wrong on that one. But he does, he makes some very cool free hands. Um, what? I don't know how old he is now. but These are really interesting looking. Here. Probably. Yes. They, he makes some very, very cool pipes. Um... They're actually not that expensive. They're only like seventy bucks. Yeah, that yeah, that's one of the things. He's not exactly as well known as who's that um, guy, Eltang or no, uh, Al something. He's got the really unique. I always see Dagner smoking them. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know who else specifically, other than the Boswells. Oh man, Boswell. they make some crazy. Boswell makes crazy pipes. I need to get one of those. I think that's the other maker at this point that I have to at least get one of theirs. And I don't care if it's Jim or the Sun. Yeah, right now they're more. They're the probably more name. known for their actual tobacco blends, but yeah. Maybe. I mean, their pipes are insane. They make some honking pipes. <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, have you ever seen the pipes that are really like the bowl is literally no, a foot haven't. tall? What? Oh man, they may they basically take the entire burl and will make the biggest pipe they can Jeez. out of it. Jeez, it's insane. They call them like extra, 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 extra Magnus. <laughs> you know, whatever. it's really weird. What I I don't they, see a lot of their stuff. I see when I'm searching for them, I see some Costellos and older older things, but they don't have a lot for sale right now on on, on eBay anyway. Who Boswell Bo- or Boswell? Thomas? Yeah, the, it is only usually about four or five that you can find on there at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of a cool looking one. A 1950s Costello. I bet that's uh, not a uh, Yeah. Cheapo. Hey, guess the price. How big is it and what shape is it? It is called a Sea Rock Briar. And it's used. And obviously there's lots of oxidization on the, on the stem there. Um, cause it's, it looks like it's, it looks like it hasn't been smoked, but they didn't do like any restoration or anything. I'm going to put it in the 450 range. Well, you, it might go that high. It's, you got well, it's $250 right now and we have an hour left. Ah, not too far off. Uh, Peter in your chat says states for a year any cigars that came out i need to try i don't know what's come out in the past year to be honest uh, so i couldn't tell you yeah well okay what what was the thing we were talking about um rose of sharon um oh yes the southern draw yeah cigar. so like yeah. i keep hearing about a few different cigar like i'm kind of out of the cigar world a little bit and so but that's southern draws rose of sharon i've been hearing about this everywhere um so if you, I think that's definitely one to check out. Um, if, you know, if you, if you like the, like for a lot of people, they, they like to ride like the, the buzz, like the wave. Um, and so that's definitely one I would consider because, yeah. And I, whatever, um, I, I just saw one, it's called, it's called like the Hulk cigar or something like that from, from um, uh, Tim. No, no, Brad, Brad has his new company called Zeal Cigar Company, Zeal Team 6. He's got a weird triple barber pole, and I was like, I would try that. It's, it's six dollars. <laughs> it's got a green, like candela-looking leaf, some sort of like Colorado leaf, and another. Like it has three different colors, and it actually looks pretty good. So, 
I would be interested. Cool. Just, just, just for fun. Like that looks like one of those cigars that you just say, "Look what I got," you know. But I don't know how good it is for six dollars. So, <laughs> let's see here. Yeah, where I wonder where Pete was if he was out of the states. By the way, I, I, I switched from well, I was I was thinking tea, but then I saw this and I was like, I should try this. This is Jameson's uh, Castmates Stout Edition. Have you ever tried this stuff? I don't like alcohol, so I don't. No, drink not it. even a little bit. <laughs> No. Well, I th- I don't have anything against it. I wish I liked it, but I don't. <laughs> so I just stick with well, my tea. There's plenty to explore in tea. Yeah, so I was going to say, if you ever do, consider uh, an Irish whiskey, because they're really mild and they're super easy to drink. Um, and yeah, you might, you, yeah, I never thought I would like it, but I, I you know, it turns out I do. <laughs> So, let's see. I keep going back to the... Oh, uh, Peter was in Japan. Uh, let's see here. I think we got... Oh, there's only two people watching. Man, there's not a lot. We should get more. I think it's because it's probably glitchy and then probably the squeezed look. Yeah, I had I had a sharp drop. I think something might have happened. I had uh, all at one time. I had three people drop off all right at the same time. So there might be a slight glitch that we're dealing with at the moment. Well, and I think too, what happens is it takes like 30 minutes for people to like get on and then they, and then yeah. they watch for like 10 minutes and then they go. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, how do I, maybe we should like plan like the, like the best or the, you know, what, like, I guess the most important or the funnest or the best part we should plan for like 30 minutes to maybe keep the retention. I don't know. I think a lot of people come back and watch later too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Peter, fr- uh, Peter, the guy who wanted to know, he said he's smoking a Monte Cristo number two. Which, if you guys don't know, that's kind of for a lot of people, that's kind of like the benchmark. You know, that's kind of I don't know, like the BMW of cigars. Like it's kind of it's a lot of people's go-to. You know. It's not the Ferrari, but it's not the Pinto either. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's like the best, but you know what? Like, it's almost always in those cigar aficionado magazines. It's, it's certainly if you have an aged one, it's very good. Um, a lot of time, it's always the Cubans that are in there, though. Yeah, don't you? And not necessarily uh, the uh, Dominic. Uh, I think they're based at the the ones for the U.S. market are based at Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah, all of those, um, the Cohibas, and. Uh, Monte Cristos and the Punch and all those those are all Dominican. Um, and I think they're Altadis or General Cigar, one of the two, maybe both. I believe Altadis has them. Yeah. yeah. Altid- I know Altadis has uh, Monte Cristo, Romeo e Julieta, and um, oh crap, what was the last one H Upman. Yeah. I know all those are Altadis. Um, I assume Cohiba is probably in that too. Yeah. Um, have you had but? Cohiba actually released a Nicaraguan Puro. Yes, I haven't tried it. Um, it is so good. <laughs> really, I'm gonna have to look into it, that. It is really good. I don't know if you ever had. Have you ever had the uh, Partega Spanish Risotto or Rosado? No. Oh, they're hard to. I, I'm pretty sure they were discontinued. You might be able to still find them. They're really good. I, I, they're very similar to that. If anybody's ever had that. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to adjust your screen here. Um, for whatever reason, it just keeps changing. So we got you, we got me. Okay, side by side. Um, I haven't. I, th- I think we both. I think we both need to uh, call our cable provider and be like, we need a little bit more upstream. Yeah, <laughs> well, I pay ninety bucks, and I think I told you I pay ninety dollars for ninety uh, megs. Do you, do you say megs? Yeah, ninety, ninety, ninety. Yeah, the megs uh, down. Ninety. You got ninety megs down. Yeah, and you told me I did not know this. You're downloading not the the maximum could be ninety if you're plugged in. I'm using Wi-Fi, so it's cut in half. And then you, t- I did not know this, but the upstream, the uploading is like nine and a half. And I'm like, that's right. just crazy to me that you think you're paying not for ninety dollars, which is one of the highest ones. You you would think you would get, you know, much closer to what it. You know, I don't know. That's just my my grief. 
Oh, one um, at my so my friends said CAO Cameroon, Rocky Patel, nineteen ninety, nineteen ninety two. Those are among both of our favorites. Yes, actually, the um, nine, the nineteen ninety um, was one of my first premium cigar. I bought like a five pack, and it, actually mine too. Yeah, and um, I swear because that's my that's my that's the year I was born. So I th- had a weird sentimental <laughs> thing with it, you know. Um, and I bought a five pack or a ten pack. And I swear they were better back then than they are now. I don't know why, but um, that's just my... I don't know if they were actually grown in 1990 or what, but... So the the filler was relatively new as the wrapper that was from 1990 at the time of release. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've kept the age. So they're still aged, you know, like 12 years or whatever mm-hmm. for the 1990 and 10 for the 1992s. Mm-hmm. Um, just obviously the rapper is grown well now if they're making him they're grown now in 2007 right you know 2007 2009 right um so yeah uh yeah i they've definitely changed um obviously because you know tobacco is a natural product so you are going to get some variations over time um so it is what it is uh they'll actually release a vintage 1979 the rapper was grown in 79 i'm looking this up yeah, it's, I'm guessing it's going to be a limited release because I don't think he's going to have a standard uh, stream of 40-year-old rapper coming in. I'm looking this up here. Okay, people can see my screen. Okay, let me go back. Uh, let me go to Cigars International. He has a million lines. This is my only gripe about Rocky Patel. Yes, he got me into the cigar industry a little bit, but it's I, I wonder if quality is kind of diminished with more brands and i've heard other people make stuff for him so it's just his name but not yeah i think it i think it really depends on the line his higher end lines yeah the not all the vintage um and all the numbered so the 10 15 20 year 25 year old world um those are all going to be the higher end and they're all going to be produced the quality is still going to be there mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they test they test draw every cigar before they wrap it. Hmm. You know, so they have all that all that taken care of. So usually, you're not going to get a plug cigar or anything like that. Right. Um, but yeah, I do. Once you you are going to start losing quality once you aren't watching stuff as much as possible. I know, I know he pays attention to those higher end lines, especially like the old world and whatnot. Especially because right. the old world's kind of considered one of his best ever. Right. 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 Um, right. They had to delay. They had to delay production on the old worlds for quite a long time because he wasn't happy with, with how the, um, uh, the, the aging of the tobacco was going. Hmm. So, they they had to stop making them for like eight months while they continued to uh, pile the, pile and ferment the tobacco. So it's kind of weird because they come in these like fifteen size boxes. Which norm- yeah. normally you see like 20, 25, 15. Oh, you're talking about the 1979s? Yeah, and it actually looks pretty good. Yeah. It's a Cameroon, which I'm a huge fan of Cameroon. Yeah. Me too. Uh, let's see here. That's what I put on my own personal blend. Yeah, they're, is the Cameroon. They're all back ordered. Well, the Robusta's not back ordered. You yeah. can buy a box of 15 for $180. So that would. that's They're actually pretty expensive. Yeah. I'm I'm sure it's just a limited release. Probably won't be uh Yeah. Probably will not be uh making too many more of those. But but you know what? They look they look pretty good. Like people can be uh snooty or whatever. I would say Rocky Patel is the reason uh, and uh, for a lot of people why the cigar industry is the way it is, you know. Like um I th- yeah, he's definitely the one one of the ones who brought it back from Yeah. The, from the crash after the 90s in the late 90s yeah they called it like the golden age of cigars or um there's a lot of different names but uh, <laughs> there's just a flood of brands that came in in the 90s yeah. um let's see here i've got my my uh machine here i don't know here's the problem with coffee is i can't drink it at night because then i'll be up all night <laughs> you need something that's uh low caffeine you can get some uh get some um Get a show my cake, and uh, you'll be good to go. Show my cake. I'm gonna have to look it up. Show my. Um, yeah, 
so it's white it's white tea it's made with older leaf um so it's made first they come through and pick the uh by mudan which is also called the white peony they usually pick the bud and first two leaves uh and then they come back through and pick the third and fourth leaf and that goes into the show my cake wait what 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 is, what is peony i i've heard i've heard that word a few times that's just that's just the english it's it's by mudan and for some reason it translates or is called white peony huh. on the way you know in english or whatever um, so English you usually hear, hear it called white peony, but it's by Mudan. Huh. Um, so they'll come through, they'll pick the bud and the first two leaves, uh, and then they'll go back through and pick uh, leaf four, uh, three and four, and the, that will go into the show my. Oh huh, wow! So they're they're only picking those leaves because they are that's considered uh, the most flavorful for peony or or. It's the higher grade because you know the younger the leaf, the more tender and usually considered higher grade it okay. is. Um, the older the leaf, the the tougher it is, and all that. So it's considered a lower grade leaf. So when you're buying um, like Lipton or something, it's probably the lowest grade. Uh, Lipton, Lipton, they're they're going to be growing on huge plantations. Um, they're going to be grown. Um, you know, the, the bushes are all going to be trimmed to be a uniform size mm. and height and all that stuff. And then they're just going to come through with a, uh, a weed whacker and take off. It's all machine picked. <laughs> so it's not, it's not hand picked. They're not, they're not, um, there's not some American picky. guy like, okay, second leaf. Right. Exactly. They're not exactly picky about what comes off uh, of the, uh, tree. So they really come through with a machine and just trim what they trim and that's what they use for for the the tea huh. um and then obviously it's shredded to hell so you'd never know where it came from on the plant anyways <laughs> yeah yeah huh interesting yeah so yeah all this stuff a lot of the so yeah that's what you're going to see on like the big commercial plantations and whatnot and then you'll have um you know kind of the the higher quality plantations that they still might prune, but they're going to be handpicked. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're going to be p- making. They're be going to be picking specifically to the buyer. So the buyer might want the first bud and the, the bud and first leaf, or depending on what they're making. Oh, um, hey, wait a minute. Uh, sorry, I, Mark just sent twenty dollars. Well, nice. that was a while ago, I guess. I just wasn't looking. Hey, Mark, if you're still watching, thank you very much. Well, maybe I can buy some some good tea now. Yeah, so they'll, they'll pick based on what the, uh, what the buyer wants for the most part. Um, so. Let's see. Oh, yeah, wh- what about tea? I know it's not really tea, uh, but what are some good herbal teas maybe to help sleep? I think you had some suggestions yesterday. Yeah, so for herbal teas, I don't really drink them unless I'm sick. Right. <laughs> um, obviously, you have the standard like chamomile and whatnot, um, which is fine for sleep. Um, even like the what is it? The celestial seasoning season, celestial seasoning season, sleepy time tea is mm-hmm. fine. Uh, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it. Um, but for like when I'm sick. Um, my personal will be equal parts by volume of rooibos, mullein, skullcap, and eucalyptus leaf. Um, it's just what I like when I'm sick. It's kind of got a little bit of that effervescence to loosen everything up, but, um, the skullcap kind of makes you sleepy as well. Same with the mullein, I believe. Um, so it kind of acts as a bit of a expectorant and I'm going to have to look that up. Sleep aid. Skull, <laughs> skull cap. So skull if cap, people are yeah. not aware, um, I'm trying to think, where would they buy it? Skull cap tea, maybe? Uh, skull cap you can find at any uh, health food store or co-op. Uh-huh. Um, Frontier has it. Amazon. So any place that carries like the Frontier stuff in bulk. Huh. You'll you'll find skull cap. There. It looks like they're it um, looks like they're advertising for anxiety too. Yeah. Huh. Some people um, the desert skull cap, um, which usually is not what you get from like frontier and whatnot, 
is considered really good and actually people will smoke it yeah <laughs> for, frontier, for anxiety frontier co-op skull cap herb certified organic you could smoke that yeah but usually this the stuff from like frontier is not the desert skull cap is considered the the best for uh, for smoking um but uh the stuff you get from Frontier is not usually Desert Skullcap. So Desert Skullcap is a little harder to get. So Frontier. Um, but you can find it. Frontier. What is, is yeah. Frontier just a distributor? or? Frontier, uh, no, Frontier, um, I don't know if you have them out where you are. Uh, we I see them everywhere at like co-ops and whatnot for bulk uh-huh. herbs and spices. They, they, they're basically a herb and spice company. Really? Um, but usually it's in the, it's like a bulk section where they'll just have like, you know, the, the co-op will buy it in pounds and then you can, you know, you can buy an ounce of it or whatever. So they also sell, but they sell everything like juniper berries and pepper and salt and huh. everything. Just like all regular food spices, as well as some medicinal. Herbs. Yeah. They sell this thing called valerian root, which I'm assuming is for sleep too. Yes. Valerian root, root is used for sleep. So maybe, but yeah. those, they sell everything. Here's what I should. They sell really all spices and herbs. Yeah. I'm thinking what I should do is like review all these things to help people with sleep because that's kind of like the slow direction I'm going in. V- yep. Valerian root, skull caps, maybe mint just because it's relaxing. I don't know. Yep. Uh, Mullion. Mullion. Let me look that up. I'm not sure if that is a sleep aid or not. I can't remember. But you use it. It must be. I mean, if you're using it, it must be good. Mullion leaf tea. <laughs> Yeah, I think it might be more of an expectorant than anything to help you loosen up all that yeah. phlegm and stuff. How do you know this stuff? This is just mind blowing to me. <laughs> okay, I read and I tend to retain quite a lot. Uh, this guy, <laughs> he says, "Yeah, you're right." He, this guy uses it for chronic bronchitis and asthma. Helps him breathe better. Yep. Huh. Yeah. So. uh on my channel, someone says, new to the channel, don't know why. What's the guitar in the background? That's actually on James. So. Oh, okay. Um, yes, I play guitar. If you guys don't know. Oh, my timer went off because I'm smoking some salmon. Uh, but it'll be fine. <laughs> it's just sitting out there cold smoking. Um, let's see. Let me switch my view so you can see both of us better. Uh, yeah, so I play guitar. I play acoustic, electric. Um, I used to play in like church bands. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's been a while. I've, I've kind of just been busy and, um, but yeah, if you're interested, maybe I should show that more. I don't know. Over here, I got a big pedal board over here. So I have a lot of guitar effects. And if you're like, if you are like a nerd like me, that helps you play better. So, Cause I'm not that, I mean, I'm good, but that stuff over there helps me a lot better. So. Well, all right. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you play any instruments? Uh, I play guitar. But I haven't played in so long. It's just sitting in the closet. This, this cat is always in the shot. It's a photo bomber. Yeah. Yeah, so here's the problem with me, right? So I like guitar. I like cigars. I like pipes. I like coffee. Uh, here's a coffee machine right here. Um, let me show people on this. Here's a coffee machine. And, and then, um, you know, I like this. So I like too many things. And that's, I'm not like a, ma- I'm a, I'm a master of none, so. <laughs> I am the same way. I just like way too many things and just have all types of stuff. So yeah, and I and I yeah. love reviewing. I mean, I I started reviewing mattresses, so that's what we do now a lot. Because um, you know, a lot of people are like us. They're like they were young and they're like, what do I get? And um, we just bought a Zinus, which is like three hundred dollars. And I think you you said you bought it. Uh, we have the t- memory foam twelve inch premium yeah. mattress. We've had, we've We've had it for a year and a half, and we love it. It's awesome. Yeah. So one of my one of my friends was saying, "Hey, you got to buy. It. Just just go buy it." And I said, "I don't know. I got enough mattresses, but I, I ended up buying it." And I'm like, "This is. It, it's not the premium like yours, but for three hundred dollars, I'm thinking, man. Um, so that's why, like, I like doing this stuff. I'm like, maybe I could help someone get better sleep, or, I mean, who else has that many mattresses and you know that much knowledge on." the mattress world i guess so yeah i like i like ours i can't speak to the breathability though because we have old dogs and yeah we have a a nice thick <laughs> waterproof cover on there yeah. so 
<laughs> it gets a little sweaty at times because it's not very breathable just because I know that a dog is probably going to pee in bed and actually one of them did pee in bed yeah. this afternoon. So yeah, <laughs> I always tell people get a protector because yeah, one, I mean, cause it's essentially just a giant sponge. So right. You really yeah, can't it. get it out once it's in there. Um, I mean, you can sort of spot treat it, but yeah, our dogs are getting up in age. So what kind of dogs do you have? And so I have a dachshund and, um, and my wife has a chihuahua. Uh. So, they're small. They can't jump off the bed, so they don't little even jump off the bed to pee on the floor or something. So it's, it's going to end up on the bed if uh, somebody doesn't wake up to let them out in the middle of the night. Yeah, little wiener dog. My 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 aunt has um uh, a little dog, and she actually gives it like little like I think they're like diapers. And yeah, she just rips them off. Yeah, if we put them on, so. rips off a diaper. It looks like a real baby diaper. I think that's what it is. It's all right. She she's usually good at waking me up in the middle of the night, telling me that she has to go outside. But sometimes it's just nope, <laughs> nope. Yep. You know, um, you know, it's kind of a shame because what what else do you do with your dog? I mean, they can't. They get so. My my dog is a little mini poodle. She gets really scared, and so that's. Um, you know, it's like, what else are you gonna do with this? You can't let it sit outside. It'll be, it'll be peeing in the carpet. So if it's in the bed, she'll <laughs> wake me up. So. Yeah, and if uh, we leave her in like the kennel or something, she'll just whine for hours. Right. And it's like, oh, it's like, yeah. yes, I know you've been sleeping in bed with us since you were twelve weeks old. So right. you know, there's not a, you, you can't really teach a dog old new tricks at that point. Yeah, it's like, what are you gonna do at that point? You know. She's so, kind of, she, she, you know, she's your baby then, you know. Yeah, she's all right. Usually she sleeps, she usually sleeps against either myself or my wife mm -hmm. anyways. So if she gets up, we usually wake up because we can feel her moving. So yeah. usually we can get her before, beforehand. She like, and she sleeps under the covers. So she has to rustle the covers to get out from under those. So she makes enough movement usually. <laughs> That's a wiener dog thing, I think. I think everybody's wiener dog sleeps under the blankets. I, I wish I had a wiener dog. <laughs> Just to say I have a wiener dog. Our chihuahua does that, too, actually. He sleeps under did the blankets. Did your chihuahua shake a lot? Yes. Oh, so that's like a genetic thing or something. I don't know. Yeah, and it's not like he's cold. Right. Because he, he can be standing in the sun 90 degrees outside and he still like shivers like, you know, once out once every 30 seconds or whatever. Yeah. I've heard it's like a weird like genetic neurological thing. It's just Yeah, it's just like a neurological tick. Yeah. And they're just prone to having it and He's thirteen and nothing too bad has happened, so he still runs around like a little he looks like a little deer running around in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> What else do we talk about? I'm looking around my table of mess. On your table of mess? Yeah, it's just I just put a bunch of stuff and I just I don't put it away. And that's my problem. Here's a question: What do you do for your water? Uh, my water is terrible, absolutely terrible. So um, what I well, here's what I used to do. Um, I used to mix half distilled and half filtered water, and I tested it once and it was pretty good for coffee. Um, is that what you're talking about for coffee and tea or? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I distilled is, you know, you, you can't really drink it. Um, but I, at, at least it brought down the hardness for the machine a little bit. Um, um, and then now, and then what I was doing was just using, it's called third wave water and it's a powder. It's minerals that they've formulated like calcium and I'm, I think magnesium. And then you just put that in distilled water, shake it up, let it dissolve and um, the only problem with that is it's, you know, you have to buy a lot of distilled water and it's, it's actually just kind of a hassle. So, so we just got a brand new um, refrigerator and the, the filter on the refrigerator is, it's not, a, it's not perfect, but that's kind of what I'm doing is just filtered refrigerated water. Um, and then what I do is I back flush the machine a lot more. Um, so it's, it's not perfect. If I was going to go perfect, I would go with that third wave water packet with like the minerals, but. Um, and use like RODI water. Yeah, yep. Yeah. RO, um, yeah, reverse osmosis, right? Is that what that is? Yeah. yeah. So you can either use distilled or or 
RD water, reverse or RO water, RODI, yeah. Um, so so our uh, reverse osmosis deionization. Oh, okay. So there's a second cartridge after the after the reverse osmosis membrane that snags anything that's so left. So I'm over. wondering what is the difference between so maybe reverse osmosis is passing through a bunch of f- filters maybe. So rever- reverse osmosis uh, passes through. Um, well, it passes through a reverse osmosis filter, but first it usually goes through a sediment filter mm-hmm. and um, either two sediment filters and then a carbon block, or sometimes you'll find systems that have a sediment filter and two carbon blocks before it gets to the, to the reverse osmosis. Uh, and then it passes through the reverse osmosis, which rejects you know a good hunk of the water and then allows only clean water to pass through. And then the deionization cartridge, the DI resin, will snag any leftover fine imp- uh, impurities after so that. So can you... So we use that for our fish tank. So you can drink uh, R-O-D-I water, or R-O water. You can drink that? like, but so Yes. It, I mean, you can drink distilled water, too. Yeah, but it would pull, it would leach minerals from you. Well, not so, not so much. It's usually only if if that's all you ever drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, because as long as you have a normal diet, it, it's not going to make a difference. Oh, okay. Of if you're drinking distilled water or anything like that, it's not going to take anything out because it's just it's just straight water. And if you're eating normal amounts of food, mm. you're going to get all of those minerals. Yeah, anyways. I was told, oh, you can't drink distilled water because. <laughs> It can mess up your pH level and, you know, because it's just there's there's no yeah, minerals. Yeah, which makes no sense because it's neutral. Right, it's completely neutral. <laughs> so, but I was told that, you know, because it doesn't have minerals, it's going to leach the minerals from your body and it actually will make you dehydrated. That's what I've been told. Yeah, that's 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 only if you aren't eating a, a, a normal diet. And if you're making coffee out of it you're going to get all the minerals out of the coffee anyway. So you're already like remineralizing it to an extent with what's in the coffee. Well, when so. I did uh, reverse, when I did distilled water with just coffee, it tasted really, it was bad. It wasn't, it was flat. It pro- yeah, exactly. It probably tasted yeah. flat. And I guess the minerals, when, when you're extruding uh, espresso, uh, the minerals help leach the fla- the flavonoids, I guess. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, rever- uh, RODI water doesn't taste that great because it is completely right. stripped of, of all dissolved solids. So, um, yeah, yeah, it doesn't calcium, taste great. The calcium so, and magnesium, I guess, give it that soft texture, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, it, the soft flavor texture, but if for your shower, it makes it feel hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean... Um, you can reverse osmosis is fine, um, and then a lot of people, a lot of drinking systems will run the the finished water back through a carbon block oh. again, um, and you'll pick up a few. You'll pick up some of the minerals out of the carbon block, um, but that's about that's about it. Um, so it'll filter it'll filter out like all the other bad stuff. But we use it for our fish tank because we have a saltwater reef tank, so you need to be very precise on what's going into your into your so tank. how do you add salt to salt i mean is it just like iodine iodinized salt or is it a special sea salt you have to re-add to it no it's a spe- it's usually synthetic salt but um so i use uh who am i using now i'm using uh red sea uh coral sure. pro salt um so it's specifically formulated but but what water plus it actually has a bit higher content of calcium magnesium and strontium for coral growth ah but with your tea you're drinking straight ro water uh actually for tea i am using just refrigerated filtered water but i also have a well so i'm running i have well water though it is pretty high in minerals um, but nothing bad, right. so I just run it through a. Car- so the refrigerator just has a carbon block in there, pretty much, and just right. will strip any kind of like yeah. chemical is stuff. But yeah. uh, for the most part, it is pretty hard. I always ha- I have to descale my uh, my kettle all the time. Right, right. Um, but it tastes good, so that's why I use right, it. Right, right. Like I found out that like really, I live in Phoenix. We have really terrible water because 
we get it from the Colorado River, and then they have to like it's treated. Yeah, it's it's there's so much chlorine; it, it literally tastes like pool water. And yeah. um, so the the I just have to replace the carbon filters because, you know, they do a pretty good job removing all the chlorine, which is really the only reason the the, the flavor that I hate is just the chlorine flavor. So, yeah, like if I if I if I was on city water, like when I lived in Columbus, we had an RO drinking uh, unit, so. Mm-hmm. That's what we use when we live there, but uh, I'm on well water. Um, here I, mi- I miss good. I miss well water. Tell you what, I, it's actually pretty <laughs> nice when you compare to here. I think. Oh yeah, like I've had well water. I grew up with well water up until my 20s, and that was like the first time I ever ran into like city yeah. water. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, oh, this is horrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always whatever you grew up with is generally is for the most part, what you like. Um, so, I don't think anybody likes chlorinated yeah, water, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have any more? I wasn't... I'm not keeping... I'm not paying attention. We only have two people watching, so that's probably why we don't have a lot of questions. Uh, I got four on my side. Dang, you're... So you're more popular than me. It's probably yeah. also because... Uh, so, yeah, I guess I should ask that. Does anybody have any questions on my stream? Um, my friends in there. One of one of the guys I know personally. He said, "Sounds like my kids. They hate the kennel." <laughs> <laughs> I want to. Uh, so, do you still roll your own cigars? Uh, I don't. And uh, people, they want me to do it. They want you know. I've got all the stuff. I just don't have the time. And um, so. I was just thinking about it. I'm like, okay, by the time I set everything up and then I get it, I get the, the tobacco just right. And then I'm going to mess up a few cigars just because I do it like once a year. Um, oh, are, are you talking? I, I saw your lips, but I can't hear you. Nope. I wasn't oh. talking. And so, yeah. So what I figured out is like, okay, if I spend a day rolling cigars to make 20 of them or 30 of them, you know, you start to do this thing where you're like, okay, is it worth my time? Are they as good as cigars I can buy? Um, I, I love doing it just because I like learning and I'm, and I'm, I'm a curious guy. But um, I'm like, oh, man, I could just buy like a $5 cigar and it tastes just as good as mine. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's super fun and I really appreciate doing like learning the craft. But as far as like... You know, I could just buy a five dollar cigar, and you know, it's just as good. So, so you you really have yeah. to roll a lot and get good at it, and roll and batch roll, and you know, really like spend a whole weekend, and you know, because it it makes a mess. And then, um, I don't have a perfect system down yet, so I'm I'm learning a lot. And so, you know, if you want to really do it, I tell people just spend like a weekend and just roll as much as you can, and half of them are going to be duds um, the first few times you do it. So. Uh, what do you have for a mold? Um, I've got three different molds. I've got, um, oh, I should probably just show you. Um, I think I, yeah, let me show you. Here, let me switch your view so they can just see you. Okay, hold on. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> so while James is doing that, I'll talk, and he has no idea what I'm saying. So that could become interesting. But, uh I like to roll my own cigars, and I, I, I definitely need to do some videos. Um, for those wondering who are watching on James stream, uh, you can find my channel T N Tobacco. Oh, it's T right. N okay. Tobacco, so you can go check oh, them out. You. And you can go I'm check out James uh, James's channel. For those watching on my channel, he's James Patton. If you just uh, YouTube uh, James Patton, you'll find his channel. So his channel is James Patton, and uh, mine is T N the letter N tobacco so if you want to go find that out and for whoever was asking earlier about getting into pipe smoking i also have a how to smoke a pipe uh video it's actually one of the most popular on my channel so you can check that out and i go through the steps of uh smoking your first pipe so you can go check those out and now james is back I'm so back. <laughs> finish my plugs no you're good <laughs> um i've okay this is called so if you're into let me see um Okay, we're split screen still. Okay, if you're into, uh, let me let me just do mine so they can see more. Okay, so if you're into like antiquing and stuff, you might find this at antique shops. 
It's a, it's called yeah. the Carl Hart. Uh, it's got the number and the. It's got the place. The sh- it's, it's a German name, Schweitzen Jigsen. I can't even say it right. But this is an old find I found. Old style. This is probably from the 50s, I would guess. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Yeah, a lot of the makers now have switched over to plastic. And all the glue is coming off on this, and it's really beat up. But overall, it's in good shape for Mm -hmm. being old hand-carved wood. So these make little perfectos. And um, and I, I... I didn't because it's because this is a real antique. You can see there's cracks in it where people re, were using it, um, and uh, I just brushed it out very lightly because it had a really cool. You can still see like the old patina look to the wood. So this is actually yep. for the most part it's display, but I love the size and they're really small and easy to you easy to uh, roll because you can just you know it's the size of your hand. So if you you if you. So what's the what's the length and ring I gauge on no that? I have no idea. It's a weird like it's a weird okay. like European <laughs> size that, that it's not a typical size. Um, I would say it's probably thirty gauge by four inches, five inches. Thirty? That's super yeah, tiny. Yeah, it's it's less than a half inch. It's about a half <laughs> inch. Yeah, about a half huh. inch. I don't know. Well, here's my finger. I don't know what how big you think a finger is. Oh yeah, I guess it is pretty small. Yeah, I probably put that at about a forty. Yeah, maybe forty. Maybe. Uh, it depends how you roll too. So this is what I like too because right. I like the small cigars that I can just kind of put. I can put, I can load this whole thing up, and I, and I have a few C clamps, and um, yep. I think they're just really unique shapes, you know. But here's here's my main one. This is a main like a the one that you get from Leaf Only, and. It's yep. just like, you know, it's probably, I think this is a 48 gauge, I think. Um, yep. And so you could roll any length of Parejo. Parejo just means straight cigar. Um, so normally I, I actually make them kind of shorter because just because I'm a newbie and it, it's easier to make a shorter cigar um, to, for it to be uniformly, you know. So I, I normally I, I make Robustos out of this kind of a thing, you know. So... I don't I don't like that mold because it doesn't have it, it you get so much pinch yeah, in the yeah, scene. There's no there, right, there's no relief. Um, so this right. for instance, you can see you don't you it's impossible to get a pinch. Because when you're in here and then this hugs around it, so right. I don't get any pinches with this. So um, that's another thing. Like even if I if I roll a really bad, that's why I roll smaller too with a lot of these because you're less likely to get pinches. But um, when you put a cigar in there and it pinches the sides, you have to roll it uh, and then flat roll it and press it, roll it and press it, and that's just a lot of extra pressing, you know. So. Yeah, so I have I actually have some professional molds I picked up. Um, grab them there. So Leaf only sells these now, but I picked them up before Leaf only started carrying them, and I have the uh, the plastic molds. That's what I need to get. So switch, switch over. So I have the plastic molds. Uh, this is a forty-eight by seven. So it's uh, you can make you know whatever length you want, but it's a forty-eight ring gauge. And then you have the nice. It's machined. Right. Let's see if I can get it in the. That's the way here. to do it. So it's machined. Um, you know, CNC machined. So a lot of uh, big companies are going over to these now. We have the uh, the the channels here, and then it's machined. So I mean, it has a perfectly nice seal, um, and you really don't get any pinches or anything. Um, you do have to do a quarter turn on of them right. just to uh, take out what little thing there is. Right. But I mean, these are is a it's a game changer going from that mold that you were showing to to a nice professional mold. I mean, you can get these at Leaf Only for about 80 bucks right now. That's not bad. No, they're great. Um, and uh, they are totally worth it, especially if you're gonna start, if you're gonna roll more. Um, they have different sizes too. Oh, that's a 48. I like that because I like to um, use the Cameroon wrapper and Cameroon wrappers tend to be short. Um, so you can only, you can only get so much of a cigar out of them. And, um, 
but they also have like you know from 52 56 i think they sometimes carry the 60s cool. um so you can make some you know nubs or whatever nubs. but uh yeah totally totally worth getting a pro- uh, professional mold if you are gonna do if you're gonna do it more often i mean you can you can sometimes snag them off of ebay as well um even the wooden ones there are now some some makers who haven't switched to plastic have still switched to wood molds that have been uh cnc machined right. So just like the plastic ones are, but they're they're just made out of wood, but they're CNC, so they are nice tight tolerances and fit together perfectly. Huh. You'll sometimes see those. I'm gonna adjust my lights here. Hold on. Okay. It's like- but yeah, like I've I've seen um, so I've seen um on eBay somebody <laughs> trying to sell a uh, mold from one of the big companies and claiming it was like from the early 1900s i'm looking i'm like that's been cnc machined (laughs) it's max 15 years old if that (laughs) so it is not antique and it is not worth the 300 dollars that you're trying to get for it yeah and i've i've even i've even messaged those sellers i'm like that mold is no more than 15 years old (laughs) Yeah, it is CNC machine. It is not well, from 1910. Or well, maybe something. this is not that old. I looked up the company and I couldn't find much information on it. I yeah, I mean those ones. I mean that one probably is 60s, maybe old-ish. Yeah, probably. It's got really old glue that looks like pink. <laughs> um, it was only like 40, 50 bucks. So I figured, worst case scenario, I'll just hang it on the wall. All right, yeah, but ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, so if you're not doing too many uh, cigars, um, man, you should you should let me know what videos people wanted for, out of you, and I'll make them. You should. <laughs> um, people always ask me how do you flavor your own pipe tobacco. They ask me how do you roll cigars. They want more. They want updated versions. Um, they want, and it's hard because I'm learning how to do cigar rolling, but then I also have to demonstrate that and show it. Right. So yep. people are like, oh, you're an expert. I'm like, no, I just, I'm trying to encourage you to do it because if I can do it, you can do it, you know? Right. So, yep. um, I, yeah, I'm the same way. I wouldn't call myself an expert, yeah. but, you know. Let's see what you rolled. Hey. My, uh, my, New air is friggin' packed. So I just have a few more left in my in my display humidor here. We but for the most part. So let me get a nice shot here. Let me uh yeah, let focus me see in here. That. that looks You rolled that? Come on. Oh you have to f- autofocus? There we go. Let me turn that off. So yeah, this is my dude, my cigar. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, so most of them get the job done. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so this is my personal blend. I call it the innkeeper uh, because it uh, pretty much tastes like a uh, <laughs> a bed and breakfast breakfast. <laughs> pretty much tastes like coffee with um, some sugar, some cream, uh, a bit of dry toast. Those are my um, those are my favorite. And it actually has a slight salty bacon note in there too. <laughs> huh. So that's why I call it the innkeeper. Uh, what, what can you share the blend or is it the secret? Uh I, I can tell you all the countries. So well it is a Cameroon wrapper that's uh, pretty straightforward with a uh, Connecticut broadleaf binder. And then filler, I use uh, Colombian, Brazilian, uh, Honduran, and uh, Dominican filler so it's a six country blend what dude so you bought all that on leaf only or yeah i got that all on leaf only dang i wonder how you get the bacon flavor that's what i'm curious about uh i'll have to check my tasting notes on what leaf gives that but uh i would assume like some strange i think it might be i think it might be the honduran that has the slight salty note to it um but yeah so i i mean i bought a sample size of almost everything they had. I rolled, uh, you know, puros of every single leaf I had. 
I, I try to find the highest quality, even the filler. You know, it's like I'm trying to find the, the best leaf to use for like a binder and a wrapper, yeah. um, <laughs> which is hard for when you're dealing with like some of the Seiko and uh, the little Hero is usually fine because it's usually a nice thick piece, but the Seiko tends to be a bit thin. Um, so it's hard to find a nice piece. But anyways, I rolled, you know, puros of every single leaf I had and then smoked those all, made tasting notes of every single one. Um, so I have tasting notes of every single leaf that I've had from them. What? Dude, um, that's intense. Yeah. So then I, then I came up with this blend uh, based off all those tasting notes to put those together. So it worked out. It's, lo- it's low nicotine but high on flavor and... Um, yeah. A few of their stuff I've tried was the opposite. It was just so high in nicotine, and it had hardly any flavor. So I was just kind of like, I, it's it was really thick, really, really thick leaf. But it was, it it, it almost had dirt on it still. It was very unpolished, um, and it just had so much nicotine. It had it was just you couldn't really enjoy it. Um, so was it a lot of little harrow? Um, no, this was some wrapper leaf. It was like some. Uh, it was sort of like a Maduro, thick, like almost broadleaf, but th- almost kind of raggedy looking. Um, was it the Connecticut broadleaf, the Connecticut Maduro? Yeah, but it wasn't like a good Connecticut broadleaf. It was like some rustic version of that. They had, they had a yeah. Those are hard. Those are hard to deal with because they have the kind of the thick veins. Super thick veins, but so that's why I use the broadleaf as a binder. Yeah, but I love broadleaf for flavor because it's kind of creamy, kind of smooth. And mm-hmm. I like how big it is, so I can make multiple cigars. Um, yep. But this particular one, I forgot what it was called, but it was it was pretty. I'm, I'm gonna show people the website real quick. So. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you really have to kind of taste each each leaf right. and determine what each quality has, and then go do you, from do there. You, do you have a, um, a tobacco shredder for your pipe tobacco? Uh, I just use. I have a. Um, a pasta roller, so I just use the spaghetti. Oh, nice! <laughs> the spaghetti cutter on the pasta roller. <laughs> My wife's not happy about that. <laughs> I'm showing people right now the website, and there's like little quick video snippets of people using their tobacco, yeah. and it's exactly how I did it. Just rolled along. I, I rolled parallel with the 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 veins to the cigar, and yep. So yeah, I mean, I'm definitely now that I've moved my office around, uh, I'm definitely going to be making some videos. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that line. If you so. make high quality cigar rolling videos, um, there's not a lot of people doing it. I mean, you're you're just going to dominate, man. Most of my stuff was on an iPhone four like, years ago. Yeah, so I mean that's kind of my plan. I also I need to put in a I need to put in an order to leaf only because I am low on supplies for especially my personal blend, um, but I'm just low on supplies in general, uh, um, and I need to pick up some La Tequila and whatnot for some pipe tobacco i have uh so i'm gonna i have a local metal shop who's gonna make me a press Mm -hmm. um so i can press some you know a plug so i can make flake tobacco and whatnot um but i mean one of the things that i wanted is for to be stainless steel uh so i but he didn't have one getting stainless steel square tube stock is expensive Um, so basically I just kind of have a standing order in with him that if he ever has a job that needs that, he'll, he'll make sure to order an extra piece or order enough so he can make my piece for me. Because if you, if you have to buy it in like one foot increments, just like a one foot increment is still like $130 or something for a thick piece of, you know, four inch square tube stock. Mm -hmm. Um, so and he checked around at some other shops too to see if they had a piece laying around, but they didn't. So, um, at some point, if uh, if it goes too long, then I, I might just have to bite the bullet and have him make it. But I really want him to make it out of stainless steel so I can press the plug and then I can put the whole shebang in the oven. Oh. So I can hot press. You know, because if it's like wood, then you're just going to dry the crap out of oh, the wood until yeah, it yeah. crack. So yeah. if it's stainless steel, I can put it in the oven. At 170 degrees and let it sit there for six hours, you know, whatever, and hot press, you know, my my own flakes and all that fun stuff. So that's brilliant, man. So that that's also on tap for you know videos coming down the line for me eventually. But yeah, I definitely need to make more um, 
more cigars and then make videos about those. I just didn't really have a good setup in my office until recently. So I'll be able to start doing that. But like I said, need some supplies from, from Leaf Only. Yeah, right now I'm showing people. I had this p uh, Pennsylvania wrapper. When I click on it, it's, there's nothing there. But it was a really hard. It was pretty harsh. Pencil the Pennsylvania. Uh, I, I haven't had the Pennsylvania wrapper, but I have had their Pennsylvania. I've had their Seiko uh -huh. filler leaf. It's actually really good. It's actually pretty sweet, if I remember correctly. Huh. Um, so that's something. Uh, I don't know. Did you have their dark fired wrapper? No, it, it, it kind of had. It, I think this was it, but chocolatey tobacco. I, definitely that was it. But it was it was just yeah. so. It was like. It was. I don't know if it was like not under cured, like, right? Under cured or under processed, but it was kind of a little too rough. Yeah, and that's one thing too. I mean, the, these I've I've rolled enough that I, I have pretty well aged cigars. I mean, this one is dated November two thousand sixteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this cigar has been aging in my humidor right. for you know coming up you know two and a half years over two and a half years now um so i ro i just kind of roll a bunch of them at one time um but uh yeah you definitely kind of need the space so what i do is i have two of those molds of the the seven by 48 so i'll load those up you know the both mm -hmm. of them i'll press i'll come back an hour later to give them the quarter turn and then i'll leave them pressed overnight while my wrapper leaf is you know yeah, moisturizing or whatever, and then I'll wrap them the next day. Um, so I, you know, I can bang through twenty of them in you know two days or whatever. Right. Um. Uh. So people are asking, where do you start rolling your own? You go to Try Leaf Only. There's a lot. To, there's a lot of. They even have like, uh, um, it's like a kit that you get, and it's just like everything's in the kit. You can try rolling like twenty with it. Um. Yeah, just know that they're not going to be that great because the kit press is Yeah, it's crap. just two pieces of wood. Yeah, it's just two pieces of wood. So you're going to get these huge seams, but you'll at least get in the ballpark. Yeah. Um, if you, you uh, can just roll by hand. You don't even really need to press, but it wouldn't. Yeah, you, yeah, you can do that If you were good. Too. I've never had any good – I haven't had any good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Like I have so much scrap, I'd love to be able to just roll some small cigarillos, but uh, they always come out horrible. <laughs> yeah, well, with mine, um, with my scraps, oh, I don't have it with me. Um, I've got this thing. It's a tool called a perfect draw, and it's like a little cutting tool. Yep. So I'll load up like a cigar, and even if I over over fill it or whatever with the scraps, I just draw like a few holes with the perfect draw, and it turns out okay about doing something like that i'd love to have like a press like a 32 gauge press mm -hmm. but uh, you know we'll see um but yeah as far as uh where to begin with your cigars yeah definitely leaf only is the place that has all the stuff um if you really want to get into it uh i would get a higher quality um a higher quality mold uh if you're interested after like using one of the kits um so at least you're kind of like in the ballpark um and they have uh, t pipe tobacco blends and uh you know just all kinds of stuff for pipe tobacco too but whatever right. wh whenever yeah, it so says yeah. gaba or a gaba gaba leaf or fronto leaf those are like really harsh leaves i've noticed that are for like smoking weed like rolling like blunts and things <laughs> I'm rolling blunts. And yeah, stuff. so those are uh, yeah. graba or graba leaves and frontal leaves. Uh, they're usually lower quality. They're lower too. quality, and they're really just designed for wrapping up weed. It sounds like. Pretty much. Um, I'd st I'd stay away from those. Oh, let me blow up. Yeah, oh, if you go right here, I computer. mean, they're kind of like it's sort of like uh, it's like a broadleaf almost. Yeah, but I mean, it's not to say they're bad. I just don't think they're going to get great flavor if you're just using these. Right. Um, so, Siggy hand roll video is that silly? Uh, no, I mean, I'll, I'll wait. Siggy, Siggy hand roll as in cigarette hand roll or cigar? <laughs> I'm not. You went a little short on the uh, hand there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll definitely work on. Um, uh, getting some how to roll cigar videos out there. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I'll try to do what I can. Uh, if people are interested, they can they can bug the crap out of yeah. me um, from my <laughs> from my YouTube channel. If you go into the about, you'll get my email address, and you can bug the crap out of me if you want. Um, but yeah, I'll 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 do what I can so I can kind of get those moving towards the uh, front of my list of to do videos. Um, and then hopefully I can help you out from there. But really, yeah, Leaf Only is probably the place to go. Uh, I actually have a promo code there if you want 5% off or if you just use the promo code TNT. Oh, nice. Uh, you, you'll get 5% off there. Um, I ordered I order enough that I order on the wholesale oh, site. You do? No way. <laughs> Good. If you order ten pounds, if you're gonna order ten pounds or more, you can get the wholesale pricing. Um, Wait a minute. So yeah. you order so, so you much do- that you order whole like by ten pounds at a time. What? Do you, holy cow! Yeah. Well, I'll buy like I'll buy you know two pounds of the Dominican filler, you know, a pound of the uh, Honduran, and then two pounds of the other one. So right there, I mean, that's seven pounds. I'll buy four pounds of binder leaf and I'll buy, you know, two pounds of wrapper. So you're rolling, um, 50 cigars, 60, 70 cigars. Yeah. Which is, it it, it is cheaper. Uh, it's, it works out to, even after all the scrap, it works out to about 80. I've calculated about 80 cents. Right. I, I was doing, I cut when I was doing it, I had maybe less experience. So mine is about a dollar a a cigar, depending on the, what you're, what you buy. Right, and if I mean, if you got decent, decent, decent taste, and you can go through all those samples and you know make your tasting notes and then blend from there, I mean, you can tailor it to exactly what you like, which is one of the best things I you know about this cigar. I mean, I'd put this up against any you know name brand. It doesn't look right. great, but the but flavor right. wise, I'd put this up against any name. brand. But the brand draw cigar. and burn might not be as great, but you you figure it out, right? Right, uh, and for the most part, uh, they're they've been fine. But I mean, flavor wise, I would definitely put these up against any of the high end guys. Yeah, because it's specifically what I like. Yeah, the so, reason the reason why me, I started rolling definitely. is because there was this huge cigar apocalypse, you know, with all the talk of the FDA and everything, and I just thought, okay, well, I'm just going to start rolling my own because I guess whole leaf tobacco is sold as a textile because I guess farmers use it. Yeah, as an agricultural yeah, product. Because I guess they use it as a natural pesticide. Um, so it's taxed differently and it's not really seen as it's it's not oh, it's, taxed. Yeah. So right, right, right. <laughs> it's not taxed and it's not seen as what it is, as tobacco essentially, for, by the government anyway. Right. And actually I think that it's that way in the Canadians right. as well. Um, yeah, so my my friend uh that has tried my cigar says he uh, puts my cigar in his top five. <laughs> oh, well, maybe I should, maybe I'll trade you one or two. Yeah. The, so yeah, well, I mean, they, they come out exactly how maybe, I want them. So maybe what I'll do is I'll give you my, wait, do you like coffee? I had a cup today, but it was my first cup in like a month. Oh, never mind. You. I don't. So I don't. I don't really I was drink. Coffee. Say, I'll just send you like a pound or two of like my roasted coffee, and you can send me one of your cigars. I mean, my wife might drink yeah. it. What? But yeah. But if you if you won't, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. My my wife will probably. What what is the deal with coffee? Do you is it just because you don't like it, or is it just you haven't found a good one yet, or? Uh, I mean, I like coffee. I just. I just don't drink much of it. Uh, usually, the super high caffeine will get yeah. to me. Me too. I'm pretty sensitive, actually, to caffeine. Yeah. So I, I tend to. I mean, considering how much tea I drink, I can drink a lot more tea with less caffeine. Yeah. yeah um. It's weird. I. I mean, if I was sipping coffee all day, I'd be totally. You're right. Screwed. Yeah. Here's <laughs> what I've noticed: caffeine in coffee, it has a, uh, a spike, and then it and it drops, and. Um, with tea it's a slow burn and it, for me like i kind of i kind of grew up with adhd and so tea for me is perfect you i can drink a lot of black teas and it's just a slow burn of caffeine um I, so- yeah because i mean so this five grams of tea that i've used i had a you know 32 ounces of tea in my in my pot here mm-hmm. and 
caffeine wise, it's the equivalent of one right. cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for a 32 ounce pot is equivalent to one right. cup of coffee. A small cup of coffee, not a. <laughs> not right, a cup right. Of so it's, it's very different, you know. You're not shocking your system. Right. Um, let's see here. Do I have any questions? I think. Oh, there's. We only have one person watching. See, we're not cool enough. I'll put. I'll put yours in mine. <laughs> okay. Let me see. Show. Okay. Let me click it. Let me click it. What? Oh, that's just that's just my yeah. channel. Oh, oh, oh! For to share, you mean? Yeah. People want to bug me. They can. Uh, they can. They can come see my channel. That's a good-looking thumbnail. <laughs> a, a shameless plug. But I thought it was a funny thumbnail. Well, I didn't know what other picture to get um, of you, so I was like, okay, I guess this will work. <laughs> it's kind of one of those weird pictures where you're like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I was just thinking, it's the best I could do. <laughs> I try to make I try to make the color it. look the same, but then it, you look kind of green. I look kind of green, maybe a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, and then we kind of strayed off of it. Um, for for tea, uh, some other sources um, for good quality tea, you can check out check out the uh, Dragon Tea House Biz. Um, they are a Western facing Chinese company. Uh, they have pretty good stuff. That's where I actually got this Da Hong Pao. Um, it's not that expensive. They have, and they have a pretty good selection of pours as well. Um, there's also the King Tea Mall. Uh, it's pretty good. And then all those boutique suppliers that I talked to uh, earlier. White Two Tea with the it's the number two mm -hmm. White Two Tea, uh, Crimson Lotus, and. Um, yeah, you can, you can go called, check those guys uh, the out The first too. one's dragonteahouse.biz? Dragon, yes, dragonteahouse.biz. Okay, I'm showing biz. people right now. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Um, with, with them, Unan Sourcing and uh, the T-Mall, they are all big, so shipping can take a while. Oh, yeah. Um, Wait. So just be aware of that. Um, you usually can pay extra for uh, expedited shipping, um, on Unan sourcing, I'd say definitely do that because it's usually only a few more bucks. Um, Dragon Tea House shipping is included with the price of the tea, so the shipping is technically free, I guess. Um, or you can pay for expedited shipping, um, and I believe you can do the same on on uh, King Tea Mall as well. Um, so just know if you're going to ship uh, the cheapest way, it could take it, to the U.S. It could take four to eight weeks, oh. um, though I've never actually had it take that long. I actually just got a, a shipment shipped ground uh, two weeks ago, and it took ten days. So oh, that's not bad. Um, yeah, if you but if you go expedited shipping, you might get like seven days. But again, it, you could be four to six, four to six, four to eight weeks, uh, depending. Um, also, oh, actually, White Two T does ship out of out of China as well, so. Um, it could take a while. Just just know that for ordering that it will take some time to get there. But I've never had I've never had a package get lost uh, or uh, substantially damaged. You might have a little <laughs> little box dings here and there, but really hasn't been a problem. Uh, for whatever reason, they're selling mushrooms. What's up with that? The problem medicinal mushrooms. Yeah, but sort. it's like. Although dried dried mushrooms are pretty big in uh, Chinese cuisine, so mm -hmm. it's probably just something that they happen to, to carry. Oh, I think my wife's home now. They have a few. They have a few other like uh, herbs and stuff that they have as well. They don't carry just tea. If you're talking about the dragon tea, yeah, ones. I was surprised. Is it some sort of fungus that you eat? I guess I don't really know. Yeah, I mean, dry, dried mushrooms are pretty are used in like soups and all that kind of stuff too, mm -hmm. in in China. So, because obviously they store forever if uh, you dry them. They have this thing called Supreme Organic Ancient Tree Golden Noodles. Dian, Dian Hung, Young. You, yep. Uh, that looks pretty. I've never seen tea like this. It's like yellow. Is that in the? Is that the brick? No, this is just loose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. I have. I have that, and I have some of that in the brick in a brick it's form. It's like yellow. But yeah. 
Yeah, it's a it's a black tea, right? Uh, I get, I yeah, but it doesn't look black. Yeah, black tea. Well, the higher end stuff is more of a light brown to yellow ish. Huh. You won't find a whole lot that's super super yeah, black. Yeah, it looks like hairy almost. Um, which is why, it, which is another reason it's actually called red tea in, in oh, China. Okay. <laughs> it looks kind of like spider legs, if I'm being honest. Yeah, no, that's really it's really good stuff. Um, huh. a, a lot of the higher end black teas, you'll get, uh, you'll find a lot that have really nice chocolate notes, mm-hmm. um, dark chocolate notes. So. Definitely something so to they check out. sell at Dragon Tea House. They sell white, yellow tea, oolong, pu'er, floral. So what's yellow tea then? Yellow t- uh, under their definition, I'm not sure. It might be oh, crap. I don't even remember the name of it. Uh, it's a type of tea that grow that they actually seed with. Um, they actually seed with. Uh, flour like wheat mm-hmm. flour um and it grows th- th- this type of mold grows in oh. it <laughs> which is a yellow which is kind of like a yellow mold and uh transforms uh transforms it uh this guy named doozer town says where in the world are you two i'm assuming he's not a subscriber this is on your channel um well Doozer knows where I live. I'm in New Hampshire. James is in Phoenix. Yeah. Um, what's the local tea? Th- oh man, local tea for me, nothing. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm I'm two hours away from anything good, tobacco wise. I have a small. There's a there's a small lounge here. Um, there's a there's a cigar bar here. It's actually decent. The selection's okay. Um, nothing for pipe tobacco though. I'd have to drive two hours to get any good pipe tobacco and absolutely zero music here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would say um, Phoenix, we have, if you're going to get tea, there's a few um, high-end coffee shops that have pretty good tea. Well, relatively good tea. Um, but uh, nothing real fancy as far as tea. Tobacco, yeah, we have everything you could want. Arizona's really cigar tobacco friendly so we have a lot of local companies here uh tnt is here um cigars daily and now zeal team six and cigar warehouse and there's a lot of shops so we have arguably the best state for cigars um and if you there's a lot of local native tribes here and uh, so technically, if you're on a reservation, you're not really on federal land. So they can tax the tobacco the way they want. So often that means it's cheaper. So if you're really lucky, you can go to uh, a reservation and maybe even get a better discount just because it's not taxed the same. So, but then, the, but yeah, nice. but you have to drive. <laughs> you kind of have to know where to go. And there, some reservations are really nice. Um, and so I can only think of one called Owl Ear, which is a little cheaper just because they don't have taxes the same. But music, we have a lot of music. I mean, it's just, you know, music's music. I don't know. We got a lot of stuff. <laughs> yep. Let's see here. I feel like, did I? I wonder how many people you ha- uh, are watching. I got to go back to mine see if anyone's has it has a question is my mic too loud okay no you're good uh i got two people i got one person (laughs) i feel so bad i'm like wow this is okay i think it's because it is getting late on the east coast i mean it is because the screen is squished i'm sure it's not pleasant to the eye but we'll have to fix that for next time yeah well yeah I think for the most part, it's looked okay on my end. So yeah, I don't really know. I can I, I can dro- I can drop you my local file if you want to put put it out there. Sure. Um, I'm trying to figure out why did it go to that output. I don't know. And why <laughs> uh, why can't I rescale right now? Probably because I'm streaming now. Probably. Yeah. But um, I, th- I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, we got three people watching now. Oh, all right. Well, now we're famous again. <laughs> you got to bump up. I still got two on my side. <laughs> That's five people. 
Yeah. If you guys are just tuning in, what we've been talking about teas, the best kind of tea, uh, pretty much everything. Pipe tobacco, cigars, rolling your own. Do you? Everybody's gonna have to come, uh, come, uh, rewatch, rewatch the stream yeah, later. You, What's up? What, what I was know? gonna say, the the three people watching. Do you have any questions for us right now? Because Eric from Teen Tobacco, um, I'll put his link down below. He knows almost everything about tea. So if you have any questions, this is the time to ask him. Yep. It's been a good time. We should do this uh, more. The only problem is that we're <laughs> you're on Pacific time and I'm on Eastern, so we have like a three hour gap. It's like when do we yeah. find time to? So do it's ten thirty six your time, right? Yep. Yep. Well, I'll be um, when daylight savings happens. When we, when you know, when we fall back, I'll be Mountain Time. So I think. Right. That's, I think at some point um, we might. Uh, New England might switch to uh, Atlantic time and stay there and not recognize daylight savings, but we'll see. Yep. I'm hoping that happens. Oh, we get. <laughs> so then we'll all we, we then we'll always be three hours apart. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we talk about. I feel like that's. I'm trying to think, we've been on for two hours or so. Yeah, the, dude, <laughs> we're we we were on for four hours together by ourselves, but it was mostly uh, mostly YouTube bitching. Yeah, if you guys don't know, it's hard being a YouTuber. So, um, uh, for instance, we were talking about the weird rules and how the algorithm is not fair or accurate. Um, so um, it was kind of cool having what's his name spend. Uh, I think what was his name? Viewer activity. Mark Whitaker. He like twenty dollars. Like. Even if it's not like, I mean, like little things like that really add up. So, um, so yeah, like that's just for if, if, if anything else, that's emotional support because you have a lot of issues with tobacco, alcohol, and YouTube. So, so. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. They've definitely uh, trying to throw some roadblocks and yeah. uh, like in I was way. doing. I was telling um, Eric the other day, like I was doing cigar stuff for like eight years. And um, I don't think I ever made a dime doing it. And so it's not that I don't love it. It's just um, the mattresses and coffee, like it's easier to get that monetized um, and then enjoy cigars as a hobby and keep it as a hobby. So it's just so tricky kind of following the rules. Unless you have like a cigar company like Cigars Daily, it's hard to really spend that much time doing cigars. You know, it's, it's just hard, you know. Right, because like him and Zeal and previously TNT were using their YouTube channel as more of a advertisement to get you know new customers to their right. companies. So they're not they're making so. money. Right. Either way, they're right. Exactly. They're making money pr pr promoting their business. They have a right. Product. They have a product they're selling. We're not selling a product. We're just guys hanging out enjoying cigars and pipes. So. Um, Right, our, our the uh, the content is our right, product. right. So that's why like Patreon <laughs> is important for us, um, because we're not going to make money on advertisements, and um, you know, so Patreon's a big deal. If if you really value these, the, you know, content, you know, this is this is how you get it through Patreon. So it keeps people like us alive. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I haven't started one yet. Like my original plan was going to wait until I got to ten thousand before I dealt with crowdfunding and then of course uh then recently i had a few things uh demonetized that were my heaviest yeah. hitters and my and my biggest uh my what biggest draw of new subscribers too so uh that was kind of a bummer especially and one thing a lot of people don't know is that if a video gets demonetized youtube st stops suggesting it as well yep so like one of my videos was suggested you know, ten to fifteen thousand times a day, and now it's only suggested nine hundred times a day. Yeah, or um, <laughs> because YouTube wants to make money, so the the videos right. that are like happy and generic and quote unquote family friendly, um, they'll promote those more. Um, and then the videos that I spend a lot of time and money on personally, no one no one ever sees because they're not they're not promoting right. that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's hard because then you're like, well, man, I'm like being censored here, and I, the stuff I'm passionate about, 
doesn't make money and it's not like i it's, ultimately it's not like the end all be all it's just to sustain that it's hard to sustain that you know yeah and especially like um you know stuff that we were doing you know i i buy tons of pipe tobacco that i normally right. wouldn't um because i want to review it for people and people want to know uh same with cigars as cigars that i buy that i normally wouldn't um yeah and tea that I normally wouldn't. Um, yeah. So I was to the point where my channel was sustaining itself. I was bringing in enough cash to at least offset all those costs. Right. And now it's kind of gone back the other way. So it's a little, I'm a little bummed about that, but you know, it, it is what it is. Right. So I guess it's uh, kind of plow forward, see if anything happens. Um, if you can make any improvements and all that fun stuff. And obviously as crowdfunding becomes a little more popular, uh, and it is pretty popular now, and hopefully that will help kind of drive a new a new level. But again, with the problem, if you get demonetized on YouTube, they stop suggesting your videos, which makes it harder to find the audience who's actually looking for you. Um, so that kind of sucks. And the, the last problem is they're not consistent about it. No. So, I mean, the video that was huge and got demonetized, I can search for the same thing. And there are videos with the same exact topic that are monetized right now. Yep. So it's like, well, why did I get demonetized? And these people are still monetized. And it's like, after three years, why did you demonetize me and all that fun stuff? Well, what suddenly happened right. that my content after, you know, 300,000 views suddenly became right. bad content? Well, it's really whatever. weird. Um, like I review, uh, I have a second channel called Jimmy Reviews. And I review CBD products and, um, you know, gummies and tinctures. And I'm, I'm just, it's just a fun thing. And I had one, my first video, my, my very first video, I'm trying vaping. And it was on for like eight months. Well, at first I put it on my main channel. And then someone said, make a separate channel because they're going to flag you. So I created a separate channel, which is why I created it. And it was doing really well. It was getting a thousand views a day, which is for me, that's like, that's a lot, you know? Uh, and, it, and it was growing and it was like 30, 40, 50,000, you know, views. And then um, out of nowhere, just like six, seven months later, they was flagged for inappropriate content. And all you can do is click a button to protest it or whatever. Like there's really no, it doesn't say why. Um, I'm not doing... Yeah, they just said you violated the community guidelines. It's like, okay, which right. guideline? It's like they're not, they're not right. even like, they can't even tell you that right. much. It's like, so oh, like come vaping on. apparently is a well, that one video is considered age inappropriate. But I'm like, I'm just vaping. I'm not doing anything illegal. I don't know. So I, my theory is that maybe a a, a competitor flagged the vaping. Um, I, I don't know, flagged it as an agent appropriate. Right. Did somebody flag it or something like that because they're being dicks? Yeah. Or, so, I mean, else? that was like, wow, like this vaping thing, people like vaping. And I'm just starting and I'm trying it out. And I wanted to show people how you could, because, you know, for sleeping and things like that, CBD is great for inflammation. And so I, I'm just. And the dumbest thing, the dumbest yeah. thing ever is that one, even if it's age restricted, the highest coveted marketing audience is 18 to 45 right. which is exactly wh what my channel is targeted to is 18 to 45 yeah. so i am targeting the highest level you know the highest coveted demographic for advertising so why why does it matter if it's quote unquote age restricted? Why can't you advertise on it? Cause that's exactly the people you want to be advertising right. to. And, and it was doing, my video was doing really well. Like, um, you know, uh, you put like an affiliate link in there and, um, you know, it was doing well. And as soon as it started doing well, then it got demonetized and people are right. doing like heroin and, 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 and you know, like real heavy drugs on YouTube and here I am vaping CBD oh, right. <laughs> and I'm like considered like a felon or something. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Exactly. And then it's like, well, and then you look at Other, all these companies who are, who are advertising on YouTube right. and then you go watch, you know, a network.
sport TV show that they're also advertising on. It's right. like my content isn't nearly as risque right. as you know whatever you know you know Law and Order SVU. I'm not talking about yeah. <laughs> those types of well, you'll you know, see, like, you'll topics. See, like, it's like people, really yeah. You'll see people on like um, you know it's like like Showtime or or uh, HBO, and you're like okay, so. Uh, yeah, but they don't have commercials. Yeah, That's I guess. Yeah, channel. I guess you're paying for that. Yeah, yeah, you. But I mean, you if you look at any of the other you know cable networks, if you look at you know Comedy Central, obviously you got South Park. I mean, we're not nearly as risque as yeah, South like, Park. Yeah, like I'm not and cussing have, or like, anything. Family Guy on net on you know network television, and like like I said, you have all the crime shows like SVU and whatnot. They're all dealing with, you know, sex yeah. crimes. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm not even close to as risque as an SVU yeah. uh, uh, episode. So, but you know, why is that? Why am I, I advertising non-friendly, but SVU is just like fine. Like this right here, you know? like there's plenty of channels based on alcohol. I take one sip, demonetized. And right, there's beer commercials on you know every other commercial watching a football yeah, game. Oh, if I take one. <laughs> Oh, you, you know, oh, demonetized. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. There's no rhyme or reason, you know. The Whiskey wow. Vault, the reason they have a great channel is because that's their industry. They actually, they're, again, they're in the whiskey industry. Um, so even if they make money or don't, it, it's gonna, it works for them. So, Right. Like, I would love to be able to do, you know, I'd love to do cigar blending. I'd love to have my own like line of cigars or whatever. I just don't have one. I don't have the connections, but two, just to even like just the licensing to manufacture cigars is insane. Yep. I got a buddy. (laughs) His name is Jordan. He lives in Florida. He's starting his own company and maybe I can connect you guys. But, um, yeah, he does that right now. He's, he's trying to start it out and I'm like, well, good luck. It's, it just seems like there's a lot against you, you know? Yeah, I mean, like I'd have to back against somebody else who who has the manufacturing right. license, or again, who has the connections to be able to outsource this to outsource it to Nicaragua or Dominican Republic. Yeah, or something. so you'd probably take a small cut of that, like maybe twenty percent, um, right? And just let them do it all, right? But I don't have those types of connections. But, but they could just say, "Well, screw you. We have you. Just told us your blend, and we're gonna we're gonna do it right. without you." <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's like, I mean, I'd love to have, I'd love, I mean, it'd be great if we could bring back U.S. made cigars. I mean, but I mean, the, there's only like one, fa- one you know, factory left down in Florida or I don't know the name of the town that had all, you know, at one point had hundreds of cigar factories that now it's what, who's left? It's just, um, oh crap, G- J.C., mm-hmm. JC, oh, I don't There's remember a bunch what of it like is. Micro brands, but you're never going to hear about them, right? Unless yeah, you go exactly. to that shop. Yeah, there are some small you go, brands. You buy them at that shop. That's about it, right? So, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, there used to be a huge company here uh, in New Hampshire right. that uh, made cigars. Yeah, actually, the sign is still on the building in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, somebody's revived the brand. But it's not produced in New Hampshire. They're produced in Nicaragua now. Hmm. It's like four hundred three or eight hundred three or something like that. Off the. Off the I check. wish you were into coffee because I'd totally send. I just got a bunch of this stuff. Um, this is called Corner One Coffee. They sent. I'm not even joking. They sent three boxes, each of their different blends, and uh, each. Is one of them Sumatra? I'm a big fan of no, Sumatra. Um, I wish they would say what they oh. are. It just says organic, fair trade. It doesn't tell you that. That's the only thing that I don't like about it is it doesn't really tell me where it's coming from. Um, but it's pretty good coffee. I just want to send it back to you to see what you think. Okay, go for it. <laughs> it's from it's it. from Canada. <laughs> it and when they say fair trade organic. Arabica coffee. That doesn't really mean a lot because Arabica is very common. It's a very common varietal. Um, it doesn't mean it's high quality necessarily. But I found this stuff's pretty good, and I'm I'm gonna do a giveaway soon. But I was like, man, I just want to give like a pound to everybody I know and see what they think, you know. <laughs> I'm not a dark roast fan. I like the lighter roast. Yeah. If you 
button. Uh, they me sent stuff. a medium. I can send you. I can send you stuff. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, do we have anybody else? Three people watching. Yeah, I got we, three on my famous, side too. Man, we're famous. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Um, I think that's it. I mean, I don't know. Do, do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, not tonight. Cool. I'm going to go check on this salmon here and flip it around and keep smoking it. And um, hopefully I don't get any diseases or anything. Because I guess I, <laughs> I've been told that they have parasites in salmon. And if you don't buy it. Yeah, but I I, I eat raw salmon all the time. For yeah, but I guess that's considered um, sashimi grade. It's the highest grade. Usually, usually they also freeze it to like negative twenty for. Yeah. So the stuff that you buy in a too. supermarket is it all frozen? You think? Um, I'm not sure if it's all states. It should be, or if it's country. But I think all, all imported. It's from Alaska. Fish has to be, has to be frozen. So it might not. I don't know. I'm just kind of like worried because when you cure it, I'm like, did I cure it long enough? Did I smoke it long enough? I don't know. You put enough salt in it to yeah, kill everything. I don't know. When you cure it, it's kind of weird because it sucks all the water out. And uh, I don't know if I did it long enough because it's still a little bit floppy. But I mean, I always cook salmon pretty rare. Yeah. So I'm excited though because I I've never smoked my own. So you got cold smoker? How do you make it? Um, I d- I just I it? have a Weber kettle grill and I just got some. I did a ghetto style. Um, I just got some pellets, uh, like Traeger pellets, and I wrapped, mm-hmm. almost like a cigar, I wrapped a bunch of pellets in a tinfoil tube almost, poked a bunch of holes in it, and kind of just lit one end, um, and I put some charcoals near the end to keep it lit, and I'm hoping that it kept kept going, I don't know. I wasn't sure if you went like the uh, the Alton Brown route and used like a hot plate and uh, on like a pie tin and just let it smolder that oh way. Oh my gosh! Wait a minute. Wait, what? Alton Brown did that? Yeah. So what he did, he just you just get a hot plate. You put a you know a, a tin foil pie pan down on the burner, and then you put your your uh, your wood chips in the pie pan, just turn it on and, you know, put it at, you know, 300 degrees, you know, kind of medium high or whatever, and just let it smolder that way. That way you're not setting it on fire. You don't have to worry about going huh. out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to do that next time. That's actually a pretty good <laughs> idea. I, I love Alton Brown. Yeah. Yeah, me too. He comes up with lots of funny ways to do stuff, but yeah, check out his, uh, he has a whole episode on smoking. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. For cold smoking and smoking, he actually did salmon specifically in a terracotta pot, a big terracotta pot. <laughs> uh, what? I think I've seen this somewhere. Yeah, he made a he made a, a smoker out of a terracotta yeah, pot. Yeah, that's actually like cool. a really smart way to do it. Um, it's cheap, and you don't have to, retains yeah, the you heat. don't have to buy like one of those big green eggs. You could just <clears throat> use a pot from co- like from uh, Home Depot, or you know, so. Yep. <laughs> it's like the same it's the same as that concept it's really not difficult so yeah yeah alrighty well I'm gonna let you go alright cool alright thank you guys for watching subscribe to Eric at Tea and Tobacco and thanks for go ahead and, and check out James over at James Patton you can find him pretty easily yeah you can you'll find me I'm the mattress guy now apparently so yeah <laughs> alrighty well so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end the stream and um, I'll keep All you right. on Skype. Bye guys. All right. See you, everyone.